Welcome to Zapper City Council. Um, Monday, March 27th. Reminder, if you have a cell phone, would you go ahead and, and please uh, mute it or turn it off? The uh, choice is yours. We have a full quorum tonight. The Pledge of Allegiance is going to be offered by our Vice Mayor Richard Ortega, following by the invocation. Would you remain standing for both, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we come before you this evening, Father, and we just ask that your presence be with us, Lord. And Father, we make decisions based for our, our city, Lord. We we thank you and we honor you tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, that brings us to citizen comments on agenda items. Um, I like to take uh, the agenda items at the time of the agenda. So I do believe that. Uh, are there Dukes? Are you here? Right there. All right. Yeah. Hi, hi. And, and Kip Kempton. So if that's okay with you guys, would you rather be talk now or would you rather at your actual agenda uh, item? It's coming pretty close, so. But, of course, uh, we do have a public hearing and, and, and then we reconvene into our meeting. So do you guys want to go before the public meeting? Okay, perfect. Then go ahead and come on up and... Um, State your name and your address and your social security card number and your MasterCard. Good evening, Mayor Couts and members of the council. My name is Heather Dukes and I'm a land use attorney with an address of 5527 North 25th Street in Phoenix. I'm here today on behalf of the applicant and property owner, uh, Kip Kempton and Box K Properties, to request approval of an application to rezone three parcels consisting of approximately 9.7 acres from the Agricultural Residential Zoning District to the Highway Commercial C2 Zoning District for the purpose of developing a new automobile body shop for Kempton Chevrolet. If you turn to slide two, please. Oh, I have the clicker. I'm going to turn to slide two. There we go. Uh, this is a vicinity map and you'll see a yellow star marking the location of the property on the west side of First Avenue or Highway 191 along that frontage and south of downtown Safford. On slide three here, I have another aerial photograph that zoomed into the site. Uh, the aerial photo shows that these three parcels are currently vacant. They're located between 27th Street on the north and approximately Red Mile Road on the south. A canal runs diagonally along the southwest boundary of the property. And as we discussed during the Planning Commission hearing, Kempton Chevrolet plans to relocate its existing auto body shop location uh, that's currently in downtown Safford to this property, which will alleviate some of the traffic and parking constraints in the downtown area. This new property is of adequate size and has appropriate frontage on a highway to accommodate the new body shop, complete with paint bays and screened surface parking. The body shop operations will be conducted completely indoors and will satisfy all ordinance and code requirements of the city of Safford, together with any federal and state safety regulations applicable to this use. If you turn to slide four, this is an excerpt from the city of Safford zoning map, which shows that the existing zoning of the property is agricultural residential, and I've outlined our property with that yellow line. But as you can see, it has that light blue color for agricultural residential. Now, this slide is important because the existing zoning map demonstrates that there are higher intensity zoning districts already approved for this area. You can see the red C2 zoning along the highway frontage, and you also see the light purple color to the south. That's actual uh, industrial zoning as well. On slide five, what I've done here, there you go. I've taken uh, the red overlay, and the red again is the C2 zoning district that we're requesting. And so if we have our approval of the rezoning here uh, tonight or uh, the next city council hearing, you can see that it's it's compatible with the surrounding area. You've already got red zoning, the C2 zoning up and down the highway. This would just be a continuation of that commercial zoning in this area. Now under state statute, um, you are required when you come in and ask for a rezoning application, you're supposed to show that you're in conformance with the general plan. 
Um, on slide six here, I'm showing the character area map from the general plan. And this area along Highway 191 is designated as Safford Neighborhood Character Area. And one of the goals for that character area is to provide neighborhood commercial and neighborhood oriented service opportunities along arterial roads dispersed at regular intervals in this area. And that's exactly what we're requesting here with this rezoning application. This is a request to provide a neighborhood oriented service opportunity along an arterial road. So we do conform with the Safford General Plan. Uh, this is the transportation and circulation map from the general plan. The solid blue lines are your major streets and highways. And again, this just shows that that Highway 191 and First Avenue is a major street and highway in the city of Safford. So again, commercial uses along that major street are appropriate. And with that, um, I would be happy to answer any questions that you have, and we would respectfully request an approval of this rezoning application. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Does anybody have anything for... Mrs. Dukes? Probably not at this time, but we may. Arnold? Well, I didn't know where we were, Mayor, if we were just having citizen comments or. We're not on that yet. We're still on the uh, agenda items. So they're going ahead of that with the agenda items, and we're going to open up to uh, public hearing on seven. So in public hearings, when we can talk to. Um, well, because it's an agenda item, I do believe I can. We you can ask uh, Mrs. Duke something right now. Is correct. Did, uh, you to put this off for a while. Did you solve what you had concerns about? We are still uh, waiting for a survey. It's again a very busy time period for the surveys. What has happened since the last hearing is uh, Kip Kempton uh, and Box K Properties. They closed on the third parcel. They already own two of the three. The third parcel they went ahead and closed on it and so whenever we get the survey we'll just create the site plan around the easements or you know we'll we'll make modifications as they come but we'll we'll work on uh, the survey and the easements at that time once we're able to get the survey performed yes okay. there, thank you thank you yep you're up Mr. Kimpton. Great job. Pay her well, huh? All right. All right. Um, so we have uh, uh, citizen comments on non-agenda items. Mr. Lopez, it's uh, your turn and realize that uh, we can't comment to you. Um, and then, uh, of course, uh, please limit your comment to three minutes, but you're good, so. Mayor Couts, Councilman, and City Manager John. Safford Lions Club will be going to Cananea, Mexico on April 15th and 16th to do vision screening. We're going to be going to the city of Cananea and also Bacuachi, Mexico, which is 57 minutes south of Cananea. We are, I'm here to inform you that we're doing this because of sister cities with Cananea. I think this is our first exchange of ideas, cultures with the city of Safford and uh, city of Cananea, and we just wanted to let you know so that we can, uh, you know, just let you know that we'll be working side by side with the Lions Clubs of Cananea, and their uh, president is the HR manager for Grupo Mexico, Francisco Ortega, and also the their city manager, Jesus May. Man, I'm a Mexican and I can't even. <laughs> Maytor, Maytorina, Jesus Maytorina. Anyway, the Lions Club that we're going with, we're going with some people from Tucson Lions, uh, Phoenix Lions, um, Robert Rivera, I know you know him, former mayor of Thatcher, Dennis Sawyer, who's also a citizen of Safford and, he, and a business owner here. But anyway, we're just letting you know that anyone from Safford is invited to go with us. All you need is your passport, and we just want you to know that hopefully you guys can say it's okay that we can say that we are representing city of Safford. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. And once again, I, I do want to state that uh, we appreciate all that Safford Lions Club does for the city of Safford. So we do appreciate you and, and the club as well. Thank you. Um, that's going, that's all we have. Steve. Um, that's going to bring us to item seven, which is a public hearing. Uh, Jamie, you're up.
Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, this is a request for the Mayor and City Council to hold a public hearing for a proposed rezoning of Graham County Parcels 103-09-005J, 103-09-005H, and 103-09-005K. As the applicant was quite well prepared, I will go over my staff report and uh, touch on anything that uh, the staff needs to make you aware of for this decision. Um, the property is currently undeveloped, and as Ms. Dukes po pointed out, C2 zoning exists in the area already. The zoning district that Mr. Kimpton has chosen, if you will look on the second page of the staff report, um, service stations and automobile and truck repair with body and fender and paint jobs, if confined to a closed building, are allowed by right in that district. The general plan compatibility that Zoops touched on, I have another um, two categories that it fits with. Um, goal number five of the general plan land use and character area element states it will allow sufficient land for future growth in an efficient and sustainable manner. And goal number 14 of the general plan land use and character area element states support infill land uses, strategies, and programs that enhance Safford's existing neighborhoods and increase the quality of life of Safford's residents. Per zoning ordinance section 17.020, the applicant held their neighborhood meeting on March, November 29th, 2022 at the annex at 808 South 8th Avenue. A copy of the meeting notes is attached to the report. Staff recommends this rezone for the following two reasons. The rezone will provide for infill development and it will allow a local business to expand and remain within the city of Stafford. The written decision from the Planning and Zoning Commission is attached. You have the application, the neighborhood meeting minutes, Planning and Zoning Commission minutes, and the Planning and Zoning Commission written report for your review. With that, I will stand for questions. Uh, Jamie has, um, is Bill on the phone, by the way? He's on. Hey, uh, Bill? Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. I'm here. I'm can you hear me? I, we can hear you. Clear. Hello. We, we can hear you. Okay. I'm over to you. I can't hear you. Okay. Mayor, I can't hear you. Um, are you there? No, I still can't. I can barely hear you. Sorry. We tested and everything worked out fine. If you're talking, I can't hear you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm, are you, there? you want me to call you on my phone? I think uh, I'm at it. I just can't hear you. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you. I'm, you're barely coming through right now. Uh, Jamie came in, came through great. And Heather Dukes came through great. I just can't hear you, Mr. Mayor. Mayor, try this out. Hey, Bill, can you hear? Yeah, now I'm hearing you. All right, sounds good. Um, so <clears throat> I'm a property owner adjacent to this. Can I ask questions while I'm still on the bench or do I need to step down? How many properties, are, maybe Heather can help me. How many properties are adjacent? Within 300 feet, are you? Are there at least 10? I'm... Heather can answer that question if she's still there, or maybe Jamie can. Yes, Mayor. There are over 10. No, I can't hear Jamie. If there's at least 10, yes, you may speak. You may speak. You may. You may. You may participate. Okay. So there is there is more than 10. All right. Thank you for that. So Jamie and Heather, which would be has the ingress and the ingress egress been established on this property that um, I have ingress egress access through this property and I want to make sure that that is maintained if if you guys choose to split it up however you want to I just want to make sure that I have ingress egress to my property uh, Bear Couch that's 
we have already ordered the title report and there are actually several easements that are recorded against this property. We want to get the survey work done because that survey will form the basis of our site plan. Um, I cannot sit here today and tell you that there will be ingress and egress until I see the survey. Okay, I, but, but I have it. I have it on my paperwork. Right. I have it through the title agency and it's been noted and it's been documented, correct? So again, you this, see the same things I see, correct? I've, I've seen it attached to your deed. What I, I guess what I'm saying here is I, as, as Kip's uh, zoning attorney, this is a rezoning matter. I cannot sit here and guarantee private easement rights as part of the zoning process. Those are two separate different okay. issues. Private okay. easements are done between parties. If there's a dispute, okay. it goes to court, you, you reach a settlement, et cetera. But during the zoning process, this is a rezoning only. It's not public access we're talking about. It's a private easement. So they're two separate matters. It would be like if there were deed restrictions recorded, that wouldn't come up in this zoning process. It would be a private matter between the parties. Okay, so you can, go ahead. Yes, there will be a site plan. Access easements, you may have a conflict, Mr. Mayor. But as Heather points out, you're not doing that tonight. Tonight, you're just up, you're you're authorizing land use. Later on, there'll be a site plan to address ingress and egress, and there you may indeed have a conflict. That doesn't mean you can't you can't directly talk to Heather and her client, but it may mean you won't be able to participate in the site plan review process. Okay, so, so just the rezone, which I am supportive of the rezone 100%, but I just don't want I don't want to lose my opportunity to be able to speak and lose my ingress egress, which was once recorded, but that's going to be later on at a site plan, which the council has to approve a site plan, correct? Yes, yeah, Mr. Mayor, but you probably don't want to pen and you have a conflict that we can cross that bridge at that time. Perfect. Thank, thank Ms. you. Mr. Mayor, um, the site plan does not automatically go to council. But um, as, as you're aware of this process, um, Ms. Dukes or whichever attorney represents Mr. Kempton further in the process will be contacting you. If you have uh, recorded documents um, that show an easement, you may give your contact information to Mr. Kempton. They, so, they have the Right, they, and, they and so when they do um, submit their site plan, it does not automatically go to council, just so you know. I just don't want to my, my, my dog in the fight, okay? If that if that's even a word. So thank you. Anybody you don't like to fight, Kip? No. No, you you're that's all right. You're right. You are you're you're a good man. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Go ahead. I don't know how deep into this. Is, are we going to be inheriting any cost to uh, build any entrances, egress, egress? Councilman Lopez and Mayor, as Ms. Duke stated earlier, this is just the rezoning. We haven't gotten far in that process yet. So they've submitted no site plan yet. So we will review that with uh, all of the department heads and follow our development review process as it moves along. Yes, so um, just to give you a little information, the all of the department heads, so utilities, public works, water, sewer, gas, electric, everyone participates in a pre-development review with their uh, architects, engineers, contractors, everyone who could have any um, part of the project, and we work all of that out before they do engineering so that they know what they're working with. And at, at that time, they will have the survey that shows um, easements on the property. So this is the very beginning step of the process. <laughs> no, no, sir. Mm -hmm. So this is a public hearing. If you'd like to speak, this is your time to address the council. And if you have any issues or concerns over, as I was just informed, the rezone only. I don't wait too much longer. Anybody? All right. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and close the public hearing and reconvene it to our regular meeting. Going with our ordinance number nine, ordinance 23-005, the Kempton Rezone. Jamie? 
Yes, Mayor and Council. Staff is requesting a first reading of Ordinance 023-005, an ordinance of the City of Stafford, Graham County, Arizona, rezoning Graham County Assessor's Parcels 103-09-005J, 103-09-005H, and 103-09-005K from Agricultural Residential District to C2 Highway Commercial District. And you do have a copy of the ordinance in your packet if you have any questions. Discussion I'd like to discuss more on this. I, I think it's a, <clears throat> I'm, I'm excited to see business happen along the highway. Um, and I know that when uh, when you get Kip involved in in something that it's going to it's going to go really good and and I'm excited about it. Um, without saying that I do have some concerns and I think that he'll address those with Mrs. Duke and she'll address them as well. So I'm excited about it. I appreciate it. So this is just our first reading. Yes, sir. So um, I guess that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, B, and read the first reading. First reading of Ordinance 023-005, an ordinance of the Mayor and City Council of the City of Safford, Graham County, Arizona, effectuating a map amendment rezoning Graham County Assessor's Parcel Number 103-09-005J, Parcel 103-09-005H, and parcel 103-09-005K from the City of Safford AR Agricultural Residential District to C2 Highway Commercial District. Okay. One more time on everybody understand this is for the three partials, right? We all understand that, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. That brings us to item 10, resolution 23-008, the designation of the Chief uh, Fiscal Officer for 2023. Rob? Yes. Good evening, Mayor and Members of Council. Uh, the request in front of you tonight for Resolution uh, 23008 is to designate the Chief Fiscal Officer for the City of Safford. This is required by state statutes in order to uh, ensure that we meet the elements of submitting our annual expenditure limitation report. Uh, the uh, report is this designation is due to the Council on July 31st of every year. Uh, apparently, the w the way in which we had looked at that as the staff in the past was thinking it was always done right before it was submitted when, in fact, we're a little bit behind. So we will be back to you again uh, at uh, in July time after you adopt the fiscal 24 budget to name the CFO for fiscal 24 as well. But this is a necessary step so we can ensure meeting statute. Uh, if you do approve of that this evening of the resolution, we will be submitting that to the Auditor General as required. Thank you. I move we approve uh, resolution R23-008, designation of Chief Fiscal um, Officer for 2023. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve resolution 23-008, designation of Chief Financial Officer for 2023. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Brings us uh, to you and... Oh, yeah. Go ahead, B. Read that in, please. Resolution number R23-008, a resolution of the City of Safford, Arizona, Mayor and Common Council, designating the Chief Fiscal Officer for the officially submitting the fiscal year 2023 expenditure limitation report to the Arizona Auditor General. Say B. Yes. I prefer B. Thank you. Just to make sure. Next item 11, one new and old business, uh, special events, liquor license. That'll be Pam. Good evening, Mayor and Council. This is a request for the mayor and council to approve the following liquor license for the Safford Spring Festival on April 21st and April 22nd. Graham County Chamber of Commerce, Eldon Winery, Eldon Distillery, Sonoida Vineyards LTD, Wagon Vineyard and Estate, 
LLC, Coronado Vineyards. Alcohol will be served from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. on Friday and from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. on Saturday. The controlled area of the event will include the City Hall Lawn, the sponsor, Graham County Chamber of Commerce, will use event barriers and orange fencing to mark the area. They will use signage clearly signaling participants where alcohol is allowed and disallowed. The chamber and volunteers will put wristbands on every individual that has their ID checked, and at each exit will be staffed with security personnel to ensure that open containers are not taken outside of the service area. The Safra Police Department will provide security. This will satisfy state law and city of Safford regulations. And there is also a diagram in the back. Um, do you have any questions? I have a comment. Go ahead. Um, do I understand it right that alcohol is going to be, you're going to start it starting at 8 a.m.? Can I invite Vance Bryce to come up and answer some of those questions? Uh, Vice Mayor Ortega and Council. Um, so there's a group of ladies that come in and do yoga on the lawn early in the morning, and they do mimosas, which include alcohol. And then the beer garden doesn't open until um, 11 o'clock a.m. So that, that 8 o'clock a.m. is just for those mimosas, but it still needs to cover that time period. Go ahead, Lopez. You mentioned Coronado. I don't see it on any paperwork or anything I have. Does that make a difference when you submit this? Are they going to be left out? Um, I apologize. That was submitted after, later. Yes. Yes, it's, yes, she has the paperwork. This motion, but I want to make sure we're doing it right. Um, this indicates that we're approving the, the license, but actually, are we giving a favorable recommendation to the state liquor board? Yes. Okay. I, and if we're ready for a motion, I I'll make it. If we're not, if there's more, Go ahead. more make sure. um, Move that we approve the special event liquor license. Request for the mayor and council to approve five liquor licenses altogether, and that we send a favorable recommendation to the state liquor board for these five licenses. I second it. More discussion on that. There is five vans. Are we down? Or are we up from last year? Same. We're the same. Okay. Yeah. And just for your information, we added our first Gila County uh, winery this time, so we've got. Uh, Cochise County, Santa Cruz County, and Gila County Wines coming. So. Okay, so also I know that Pam originally stated and uh, Councilman Lopez brought it up that he saw six and we just, we're, we're getting ready to approve five. Uh, do we need to change our motion to include all six? Because right now it's Graham County um, and and um, Eaglin Winery Distillery and then Sonoy. Oh, yeah. it's, it's totally. Councilman McGoy, you want to? Mm -hmm. A second it. All right. Um, any more discussion? Okay, so we, we have a motion and a second to a, a motion by McGoy and a motion by Vice Mayor or a second by Vice Mayor to approve the special events liquor license for the six that are listed on our uh, actual sh uh, sheet. I'm not going to mention all their names. Uh, in, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Vance, thank you. I, uh, I know that it gets well attended every year. Appreciate all your hard work. Brings us to item 11-2, phase two electric design for the substation and bus upgrade. Dan? Mayor Council, council members, this is a request uh, to approve the expenditure of $112,250 to T&D Engineering to complete the design for the substation bus upgrade. What this will do is it'll allow us to uh, isolate portions of the, the bus to do any kind of maintenance or repairs the way it is right now. The only way we can do any kind of repair or maintenance is to have a citywide outage. Uh, we've already had approval to, to purchase the, the breakers for this project and we've received them and some switches. 
We want to keep this on pro project on schedule to do a fall of 23 and spring of 24 construction because that's when our loads are going to be down and it'll allow us to do some switching in the station. Uh, and again, like I say, we've already been here a couple of times on this project, but if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Captain Lopez, we look to you for this. We've been short three times on this. Finally, hopefully, we're going to see some dirt stuff plan and get it put in. Uh, I just have one question. Kind of like last year, we had an outage, and it was out for quite some time. The feed coming in, the 69,000 volts coming in, two circuits, and they're both the same. And that's why we were out. And so, out there in the desert, when can we get the other circuit and split these two up so they're different so that don't happen? Well, for that project, we're looking at a, another substation, a different location, and to bring in the transmission off of a different feed. The way we are right now, that was the worst case scenario, perfect storm, whatever you want to call it. We have a line coming in from the, from the north and one from the south, and then they corner and come in. We had an outage on both sides of that loop is what we had. And if we, were, if we had a sub, different substation in another location, or another tap coming off of the 69, we would have been in power. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm talking to you about. There's two lines out there in that desert. I, you know what I mean, maybe you'll look yeah. into it. No, well, the way, the way the loop is, both sides of that loop were broken. That line that you're talking about is an old feed that's way on the other side of it, and that would be bringing in a third line is what that would be doing. The difference. That would be on that same loop that was down. Yeah, uh, uh, entertain a motion for this uh, design in the substation bus upgrade. And move we uh, accept the proposal. Okay, I have a motion to accept phase two electric design for the substation bus upgrade. Second. We have a second. And it's for 112250 to T&D Engineering, correct? Yes, yes, sir. That's what was in there, motion and second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Uh, any opposed? Motion passes. Thanks, Thank Dan. Thank you. <clears throat> Contracts, agreements, and bids, installation of traffic signals, bid award. Gabe, you're up. You mean Mayor and Council? This is a request for the Mayor and Council to authorize a bid award and enter into a contract for the installation of the traffic signals to be installed on 20th Avenue. This will be between the City of Saver and AJP Electric. The City of Saver to release the bid package for the to the public for the installation of the traffic signals at both intersections, 20th Avenue in relation and 20th Avenue golf course. This will be for the installation of the hardware, including the traffic poles, installation of the foundations, electrical controllers, programming, luminaires, video detection, and pedestrian push buttons. The poles have been secured and will be supplied by the city of Saverd at AJP Electric. The project was previously bid with no bids received. The city secured the longest lead items, the traffic poles, to allow for more contractors to bid on the project. The poles were supplied in cooperation with Maricopa County. And so a revised bid was opened on March 9th with three bids received. For the budget analysis, analysis we had $320,000 worth of state appropriation transportation fund of a grant. We have spent 78,000 of that in the securement of the traffic poles. And so we have 241,000 left over in grants. So we'd be asking the city for 332,902 of contingency funds for both traffic lights. Okay. so. Gabe, during and we've asked this before, but I just want to state this again for for clarification. When the original traffic study was done, yeah, the the traffic lights was not necessarily a necessity, correct? For one of them, so it was actually, from my understanding, I'll look to Lance for this one, but my understanding is that it was warranted on relation. It was warranted and, and on close, relation and and close warranted on golf course, okay. and that was four to five years ago. Just in the past, Mayor, and so back about midway through this project, it's probably been eight or nine years ago. The traffic study it seems like out. that's how long it's been of a yeah, well, project. It's, it's been going on for I think well since I've been here uh, before that, actually, but it's probably eight or nine years ago. The traffic uh, report came out with this project, and relation warranted there was nine um, 
nine warrants with that trafficked study for each intersection. Relation hit eight out of the nine. And so it, it warranted a, a traffic signal. Golf course at the time hit like one of those warrants. Um, since that time, we've, you know, when we bid this the first time, we did it as an alternate. Since that time, when golf course is now a four way, acting as a four way stop, we decided it, it definitely warranted a, a traffic signal because we opened that back up to through traffic going north south. Trying to get on golf course might be a, a goal in itself. So we, we made the decision that that time that it's warranted and we don't need to do a study to, to prove that we, we kind of made that internal decision. Okay. So we have the, we have the options to do internal decision making for traffic signals, correct? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Go ahead. And we brought the 20th Avenue project. The, there was a direct request from council to look at doing the two signals. That's why we looked. A at absolutely. It. I'm aware of that. Okay. Yeah. I correct myself, Mayor. So we can make the direct decision for a traffic signal, but if we want federal funding, then it would have to go through and be studied and, and be warranted that way. Right. We can make a decision, but like, just like Main Street, right. we put them down there without a warrant. That was, right. that was us. Right. Cause it's on our, our stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, I definitely see that one's, one's the, and the other, the other one is, I guess, just an added bonus. Um, not in too big a favor of it, but nevertheless, um, are these, uh, signals, up to date current to where uh, EMS or, or fire can push a button and change the lights. I mean, so their, their upgrades are not just old right. standard. Yeah, they do have a control system in place that we'll get the training on once they come and install them to, to allow us to bypass the, the switches okay. and stuff. And so as far as I know, that's the only one that is working under, under EMS it will, will be that one. Or do you have the other lights working yet? There, there's no, there's no apparatus on any of the trucks to do trucks that. So we'd have to. I don't know if the ambulance has them. May use them in Tucson. Okay. I just want to make sure they were up to date and stuff. So I appreciate that. Um, once again, it kind of stinks that we have to get you know three hundred thirty-two thousand out of the contingency funds for it. But you know, well, I guess yeah, it is what it is right now. Anybody have any more discussion on that? If not, entertain a motion. I'll move that we approve the agreement uh, installation of the traffic signals and bid award to AJP Electric Inc. in the amount uh, of seventy-four three sixty-two and the use of contingency funds of three thirty-two nine zero two. Okay, I have a motion. Second. We have a second. The motion is for to install the traffic signal bid awards to AJP Electric. 574 562 and then use contingency funds of 300 332,902 um for the installation of the 20th avenue's traffic signals uh so are there any more discussion all those in favor Aye. any opposed passes thank you Kate. p card report good i I don't have nothing to cry about this time, Mayor, but I do want to point out that uh, I'm not going to see manual on our uh, PC cards anymore. We passed away, but I do want to make mention that when I would read his, he would, uh, his explanations, I didn't need to wonder. He, uh, you could tell where he was working how hard he was working and that he was a craftsman because sometimes he would buy parts in addition to what he was doing to get it done right then and not have to come back. You could read all that into what he was purchasing and how he wrote out his PCs and uh, other people in that department too. But uh, I just wanted to make note of that. I'm, I'm going to miss that. That's all, Mayor. Okay. Um, Interesting. Okay. How about the expense expenses over five thousand? Have anything on expenses under five thousand? No. Okay, revenues over five thousand. Quick brings us to item 14 announcement of current events. 
Mayor, I have something in reference to the Democratic Party. They'll be having their Polly Rosenbaum dinner on April the 15th at the Mount Graham Golf Course. It'll be a hundred dollars a seat. Is that correct, uh, Supervisor David? Okay. And uh, is Polly Rosenbaum the Republican one? She's uh, no, the, she's the Democrat one. Did they change it? No, I should not. I thought it was Rose Mumford. Did you not? Well, I don't know if I was told earlier. I don't know. Um, All right. So I. <laughs> okay, Rose Mumford, I stand corrected. Can I amend that, Mayor? <laughs> yeah. Yes, you can. Um, current events, I, I have it. I want to be, I want to try to be nice. So last two weeks ago, we were brought the talks about how our, um, I didn't have a fight. Remember I told you I was tired, Jason. I told you I was tired, but we were, we were brought uh, our uh, electricity was going to affect the, uh, the public. And then we get on the radio and we talk also about the gas being affected. Um, and so I, I just would like for us to, you know, I respectfully, when we present to the council to be very prepared to give us everything. Don't, don't think that you can't over flood us with uh, information um, and tell us where we're going. I know that there's built in adjustments in the gas department. I get that. I understand that. We heard that about a month or so ago, or probably even maybe a little longer than that. And so we understand that. But you never really know about those until you um, wonder where your your check went, you know, if, uh, on your utilities. And so everybody sees that when they when when the increase happens. So just just uh, uh, just asking that when we present that we go ahead and and uh, and then I, I'm sure it was an oversight. I'm sure it was, but I I talked with John about it, and I just wanted to bring it up in a in a meeting that hey. Nothing else to give, give, give me everything you got, even if you don't think I'll like it. Uh, I just want to hear it, you know, and I like, I like, listen, call me out. I, I mean, I don't, it don't bother me. I mean, I, I'm like water off a duck's back. Right. So we just shake it off and we just keep on moving. Hey, that's Taylor Swift song. Anyway, Mayor, can I go back to a, to a detail, a question on the reports? I think we've already moved on. Okay. Is it something you, you might you can bring bring it up to the manager? Yeah. Um, why do we have a bill for almost two thousand dollars for the Hilton hotels? Maybe the ACMA conference for Matthew. Oh, okay. So we're going to move. Uh, uh, anybody else have anything under announcement of current events? All right, the request for future agenda items. Anybody have anything for future agenda items? I have one. I'll just, I'll, I'm not going to bring it up tonight. I'll, uh, I'll be bringing it uh, as we get closer to uh, next month or next two weeks meeting or whatever, whenever that one is in April, something. I'll, as we get closer, I'll bring that in. Um, report on operational items, uh, Lance. Oh, dang it. I already just got after you for that, but I want to back up. <laughs> Told well, you see. couldn't do it, and yeah. he still did anyway. Um, request for uh, agenda items. So this isn't the one I was talking about. This is the one I want us to talk, to, to talk about. I really think we need to, in our budget for this coming up fiscal year, and it, we have plenty of time to do it before even us approving this budget, is to approve X amount of dollars set aside for what we are going to as a council support and not support and send that out to where whoever, so I'm just gonna throw this number out at you and it's, a, and it's gonna be a crazy number, but let's say the council decides we wanna support up to $100,000 from the council. And in that, in that, that is for us to to not ever have to get into a, an issue where 
uh, something is put before us and then we we have to uh, you know vote on it and some people feel it's uh, uh, becomes uh, I wasn't here at that meeting but that it feels like it was publicized or it was uh, uh, became you know like feel like they had to vote that way or not and I would ask that every one of you guys vote your own conscience up here don't ever feel like you have to vote a certain way please um, but that we set aside a fixed amount and then we give applicants up to two months to apply for basically it's a grant right or, or donation donation and um, we market it through the paper and the, uh, the courier and the radio and um, they get together and things that benefit the city of Safford that would be my like you know number one goal is that whatever benefits the city then we the manager and staff gets the, these together and brings them to us and then we spend a Friday or a Saturday and we kick these around so that not a single one of you guys ever get blindsided again or feel like you've been blindsided by um, something that uh, I bring up and I really am die hard about it and then you know and you guys feel like you have to go a certain way I don't want that to ever happen um, and so I feel like this would be an easy way to to have that for instance the you know this uh, the staff Lions Club with the Cananias, uh, you know them talking about us becoming members with them hey if they apply for it and we can we feel like it's a good fit for us then we can boom then that takes care of it but I think we should we should include everything that we do even that we currently support now which would be our fair parades which would be whatever we're supporting now that even if the city supports something the city still needs to uh, fill out the, the paper and it could I want it short form don't make them have two pages make it an easy short form and and uh, fill out sign their name on the dotted line but if they want to type a resume up they so be it you know what I'm saying uh, Mayor Council, members of council, and if you recall back, I think it was a year ago when we talked about special events and we made the move to go administrative, I brought something then for an application process that I had used in the past. Um, so we plan on putting $50,000 in the council budget this year as a pilot program. Normally what we would do as we went into the budget process, we would have it on the front end. So we would have the applications come to you during the budget process and you could review them. You still can review them during the year. So we'll try this year. We'll add fifty thousand for that, and we'll we'll do a pilot program with an application process. We'll bring you all the applications, give you a list. You draw the line at fifty. You guys discuss which which ones you would want to fund, and then you can go forward with that. The other thing that can also be done, and this really isn't unheard of on on a budget level, is you could put a contingency amount in your budget that is not earmarked specifically for. A particular item, but would be used for anything that would come up during the year. So separate and apart from any kind of application process that you want, you could also put money in there. Um, I know in a past life, even in the city manager's budget, there was a contingency. A lot of budgets have them built into departments. You try to keep them at a minimum, but particularly in council's case, if you wanted to put something additional in there for yourselves as part of this budget process, we could put an amount of money in there to be expended in whatever way you as a council would choose during the year if something came up and you wanted to expend funds they'd be available if you wanted to do that as well if we wanted to have a meeting in tahiti we could do that you could do that we might get mr mayor more. don't forget to join mr. Have mr. i'm just kidding bill just kidding <laughs> go ahead no no, no. Thank you. Uh, I think this is fine because there was this discussion by the lions and you're reacting to that, but you're having a more lengthy discussion that needs to be on a future agenda item. Thank, thank you, Bill. So it will be sorry, sorry budget. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, so we'll be on yes. that. We put um, fifty thousand in this year's budget okay. as part of the year. And with that agenda item, also, um, all right, perfect. We'll have it's to, in there. We'll have to chat. More um, Rob will be reviewing it as one of the changes that we made because we'll bring you all the changes. Because I actually think that also if, um, Bill's going to get after me again, but I think that it uh, we need to possibly even have talks of uh, the uh, Christmas bonuses in it's, this at the same time. It's been there. Okay. So and we need it. Okay, moving right along. Sorry, now it's back to report on operational items, Lance. This came out a couple meetings ago. We had the light the world. We had the machines we had during the holidays here. 
that's that was, but about a week and a half ago, I got this uh, nice plaque in the mail, um, showed up at my office, talks about uh, Arizona donations was just over a million dollars for the giving machines. So it's like to thank the city of Safford, the Gila Valley for participating in this Light the World initiative. If I remember right, they, I think they said that these giving machines were the highest volume donations in the state. Uh, and they, they did that little presentation. You were, you were gone that, that meeting, yeah. but I wanted to make sure you're aware of this plaque we got. We'll find a place in city hall somewhere to hang this up. So the community can see it. So I just wanted you guys to be aware of this. And you know why Lance It's because we live in the greatest. We do. Absolutely. Greatest yeah. community in, in the entire state of Arizona. And this community is a very giving community. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody have anything else for Lance on operational items on the presentation? Okay, that brings us to item 16. Uh, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, to suspend the regular meeting and convening to an executive session. There's no reason for us to go into executive session tonight. Yeah, we're going to postpone it. So it's going to be postponed. So, um, and uh, ordinance 19 at the will of the council, I'd like for us to table that until the uh, the 24th. We will be talking. Um, so the meeting, so this, the suspended uh, uh, executive session is going to happen on April 10th. Correct. And uh, we're going to go, so that's, that can be noted and documented. And then we're going to, I'm going to ask for us to table the 24th, or I'm going to ask us to table ordinance 23-006, which is ordinance on, on number 19 line item for us. I want to table that until the 24th so that we have time to hear what uh, happens in each session then we'll be able to come out and, and hopefully make a uh, better presentation for ordinance 23006 and um, would love to have some lengthy discussion on that. So I want that one. I want our eyes focused on that and be prepared for that one as well. So if that's okay with the council, that's what I'd like for us to move forward with. So after that, we're going to go ahead and um, close our regular meeting and reconvene into a work session, a work session is a 2023 and 2024 preliminary budget department's review. Rob, it's all up to you. And remember, so a work session, you guys just, if you have anything for Rob, just jump in there. Don't wait to be called on. You just don't want to get too out of hand. Uh, thank you, Mayor and members of the council. Uh, we are here for the second time to talk about department budgets. Uh, if you recall, we had a work session on March 6th where we went over all the general government uh, type of, of operations. And so we're here this evening to go over the remainder of the departments, including economic development, all of our enterprise based or utilities, uh, debt service and internal service funds. Right button. There you go. There we go. Uh, so just as a reminder, what we um, what we brought to you on March 6th uh, was a packet, and you have a packet tonight of all the departments that we'll be talking to this evening. But we'll mainly focus on the summaries, on a one-page summary of each of the departments. Should you have questions on any of the detail, uh, the, uh, the detail is in your packet, and we'd be glad to go over that if, if you so choose. One thing we wanted to at least let you know of what's included in every single department so you don't perhaps have to ask that same question of every presenter this evening. Uh, but it does include all of the cost estimates for any prior council approved actions uh, up to the point to where we develop these budgets. So if there are any staffing levels that you had already approved in each of these uh, departments that will be in front of you tonight, uh, those are included in there. They also include uh, our health care uh, contribution rates as has already been uh, decided by council. So we've modeled the existing uh, share between employer and employee uh, and we'll be discussing then next week on perhaps some changes moving forward. We also have included in every department the known expenses that affect every, every organization or every department. Uh, so we already know that our healthcare premiums are going to be increasing by 4.5%. So that's across the board. Uh, so again, we're not changing the share of that uh, that is now showing what the cost is to each of those organizations. Uh, there were some minor changes as well to both our Arizona State Retirement System as well as uh, the Public Safety Personnel Retirement System. Uh, those have been modeled and are already included in all of our estimates. We did have some significant inflationary issues. Uh, as you heard two weeks ago, uh, one of those inflationary issues uh, resulted in us doing a commodity 
uh, rate change in our utilities uh, due to uh, the cost of fuel, uh, cost of our purchase of power and the like. We had other inflationary pressures as well on other types of equipment uh, and supplies in each of these departments. Uh, those have been modeled as well. Uh, so perhaps you see a particular line item may have gone up. Uh, there should be an, an annotation in that line item which would have indicated there were inflationary pressures or it was the next factor of that contract uh, rising uh, up to that level. We did move some costs from one organization to another where it made more sense. Perhaps most of those moves were done the last time we got together, uh, talking about general government. Uh, but you will see one this evening as we get started economic development, moving costs from one organization to another uh, so that we can ensure there's there's a story about our, our budget, that, that our money for a particular issue isn't in seven different organizations. It's in one organization so we can have that conversation. And finally, you will see a separate column where it's applicable uh, to where we would have had a supplemental uh, ask of that department or where we're asking that we are adding additional money uh, to that particular organization. So this is not an ad of any supplemental. It's not an ad because of any inflationary issue. I mean, it is an ad for a supplemental, excuse me, meaning we don't have it today. Uh, so if you recall, there was a supplemental mid-cycle mid already in this year where you, know, you added a, a position uh, into the police department uh, as well as a, an uptick in those salaries. So that would be a supplemental to the budget, and we did that through a contingency allocation. Uh, we did not want to assume and, and presume that, that the council uh, is thinking in the same as staff. We are bringing suggestions to you. That is why we're adding those into the supplemental column. So you can see what it would be year over year to do the same thing. And then what would it be if we added something net new and the reason for that net new. Uh, so those have been added into a separate column uh, for our conversation this evening. What the department budgets do not include, uh, they don't include any uh, market adjustments that are coming from the salary survey or any changes relative to compensation other than what you have already approved relative to compensation. Uh, so that discussion in regards to uh, our compensation as well as health care premium cost sharing, uh, any adjustments to health savings accounts, that will be happening next week. Uh, so what you're seeing today is status quo, right? It's, it's not seeking any additional uh, salary adjustments that's not been modeled into our into our budgets, uh, nor any health care premium share. Also, final cost for the allocation of internal service. It's kind of the, the chicken or the egg, what we have first. So we really can't finalize what's going to be hitting the departments for their share of these internal service funds, such as fleet or technology, until we finalize their budgets. And then from there, there will be some minor adjustments moving forward. Uh, we did our best to at least um, model what we would expect uh, those departments to have, uh, but the final numbers will be shared with you when the proposed budget comes your way uh, in April. And finally, uh, we'll be going over feedback not only today, uh, but we'll also talk about some feedback on Monday, uh, the, the, the 3rd of April, uh, about some of the conversations we've had today as well as on March 6th uh, and our first discussion. So without further ado, we'll go through each of the departments. Each of the department heads will be uh, making the presentation this evening. Again, these are the slides of just the summary a slide of the first uh, portion you know, in your packet. The highlight in green, it kind of shows up as a little gray in our, in our presentation there, really is the highlight of what has been changed year over year uh, with an organizational structure. So to get us started off for economic development, I'll turn that over to our city manager, John Cassell. John. Uh, good evening, Mayor, members of Council. During our uh, last budget cycle, there was some comments made uh, regarding existing programs for economic development. So we made some adjustments to those programs. Um, you see those adjustments here. Um, first and foremost, you can see an increase due to the Chamber of Commerce contract. Now, that is going to be coming before you on April 10th. So that will be part of the, the budget meeting on that night. So you will review the contract. Uh, we have 144,000 in here for that. Now in the past, we've always based our contract on 50% of the bed tax. We're no longer going to take that approach because in doing so, we tell you what the bed tax is and that's in violation of statute. So we needed to make an adjustment there. So. Uh, we did take that from the council's budget. It's not a donation, it's a contract for services. And so we moved that into economic development. So we'll pay for it out of that fund. Uh, we also 
are in the process of developing the airport. One of the uh, services that we're looking to try and do right now is to get actual employments from the airport to Phoenix to get maybe two flights uh, of, uh, a day. So as part of that process and working with various vendors, we put money in the budget to uh, subsidize revenue for a period of time. Uh, and so we'll find out if council would like to do that as the vendor goes forward, we'll see how they do on their revenues, if it's sustainable, and then we could subsidize them uh, to help them facilitate their getting off the ground, if you will, no pun intended, uh, with air service. So again, it's a, an opportunity for us to try and get air service at the airport. And then also we are no longer going to do the building permit fees and the water capacity fee waivers. Uh, we still will be um, facilitating those who wish to move from septic to sewer, however. And then we added $75,000 to the micro loan program. Uh, if you recall, originally we had $100,000 that we put into that program. All of those dollars have been loaned out and all of those dollars are in good standing. And again, it's a, it's a really positive way to support business because those loans at that level typically are not taken care of by the private sector. So there's a, a board of people who work in the industry that review those applications, make sure that they're credit worthy, and then they make those loans. And of course, we have a pool that we did with them that's separate from an original pool that was provided to the group. And so all of the loans that we give are for those businesses that would reside in SAF or Popper. So given the success of that program, we decided to add an additional $75,000 to the fund. Glad you mentioned that because that was a question I had. So I'm glad you explained. Yep. You say no longer waiving building fees and water capacity. You mean citywide? Right. That program is no longer well. That's our recommendation based, and again, this is the budget process. So this is our recommendation: is to uh, remove the building permit fee waiver and the water capacity fee waiver, which. I think the building permit fee waiver was still at 100% water capacity had been reduced to 50, I think, in this year's budget. So it will go through the remainder of this year. Also, the business support program that we were doing, we're not going to do going forward, mostly because of some of the new um, legal decisions that came down regarding the Shires case and economic development. So we were uh, looking at that. We're going to remove that program as well. And the stuff that we had in to try to encourage here. That is correct. That was the, the impetus behind them, yes. Working? Well, was it working? I mean, it, you know, it's hard to tell really if they if you can make a direct connection, did it help facilitate? Um, possibly, but there was no direct evidence that it did. Certainly it provided a break on the building permit fee to the builder. Uh, the water capacity fee waivers would ultimately go to the resident by So, <clears throat> I'm sorry, John. I'm I might have been sleeping up here when when I heard the what the increase is to the Chamber of Commerce contract edition. Did you did you state that number for us or no? It's 144 thousand, and it's not necessarily an increase because the amount that we would give them would be predicated on whatever that bed tax was coming in at. So at some points it could be lower, at some point it could be higher. So the model that we chose was to do a specific stipend that would be. $12,000 a month for 12 months. And the benefit of that is it's not going to go up or down, but at least the budget for the chamber would then be certain. So they would always know if there's a downturn, it doesn't mean their budget ends up getting impacted in real time uh, by a decrease in the bed tax. So it would be 12,000 a month, 144 a year. So I under, so, and I think it's, it's probably good accounting for city as well as for them, but um, I just don't, I mean, I see our hotels. I see how busy they are. I just want to make sure that we're not keeping bed tax money for us to do whatever we want with them. That if we ever see an ex, in other words, because that's the purpose of the bed tax that was developed at one time. And I know that cities then finally started getting greedy with it and started pulling that back in. And so the purpose with the bed tax was to to also help to increase, you know, a, a business flow and tourism as well. And so I just want to make sure that uh, we're not kind of sticking the uh, chamber out to dry if our bed tax is way above 12000 a month. Well, we can discuss a mechanism to pay. Uh, 
I wanted to get away from that 50% number because there was no way for me to provide you with a number because it immediately violated uh, the state law. So we're, we're coming to you. We'll come to you with a contract at 144,000. We can do an analysis. Of course, COVID made those numbers go down. But if you want us to come back with some kind of a five-year average, we can look at that and use that as the basis. Well, I, I guess my question to you is, is uh, with this, for this area, does, uh, is, is the chamber happy? with with what you're willing to offer them ecstatic excited um, like I, I think i think that they they started at a higher number and they may want to speak to that in fact I'm, I'm, vance could probably address that uh, himself when we bring it on the 10th we can have that discussion okay. as we approve the contract um, but they originally came in with a higher number i asked that it be reduced to the number you see in front of you but that is a conversation that council can have with the chamber you can make any adjustment that you want within the monies available. So I, I think I would like to see that number then, if that's the, if that's okay. I would like to see what what we predict. I mean, because we're always predicting a higher number, especially when we know that we're getting ready to adjust salaries, and we're sitting here saying that we have all kinds of money to to build parks and all kinds of money to to give raises and restructure uh, people in areas. And so if we're interested in doing that, we need to also make it right with who we want to partner up with. I want us to be, I want us to do who we choose to partner up with. I want us to do right with them. I did believe, Brad, aren't you still, yeah. Councilman Brad, you're still the liaison? Yes. You, you guys work in good relations? Yeah, I agree. With, uh, and then Vance could, again, speak to, at a time when it's on, right. the, yeah, yeah. on the agenda, yeah. but... Uh, and we whatever, whatever we're willing to okay. we can't tie it back to the number That's right we can't be told so can, i think the best of, tell us that well, this is more or less than last year or? i think it's more than last year isn't it less how much less we can't tell, we don't want to know that all right so it's in it's in it, one month less could it be like it's, it's this this amount or even a different amount unless the bed 50 percent of the bed tax is more well, and, and I think the best approach would be for the chamber to present the need in terms of their budget and what they plan on doing with those monies. And that would really drive, I think, the number that you would want, right? Rather than just saying, we have a certain amount of revenue, let's give them a certain number. Perhaps the idea would be when they make the presentation to go over their budget and let you know how the funds will be used. What, what are the programs it will fund? And at least that will tie it just like our own budget to the need. I like that. Yeah, yeah, that makes that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go into that. Yeah. Answer some questions for you. I'm sorry. I, I mean, I'm, as long as you got me here and you chose to do this budget on a day that I'm going to be here, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick it right. And again, that's exactly why we're here. So okay. please, when you have that kind of feedback, <laughs> not scheduled during the week, and I guarantee I won't be here. <laughs> it, it's very helpful because again, it's you know we've talked about the chamber and the funding and and the value valley wide uh, situation, and again. Uh, be more than happy to raise that number. And again, I think Lance can bring a budget that will kind of let you know exactly what it is they plan on doing with it. And we can have that discussion. And John, I want you to know for clarification too, that I don't feel like you're hiding anything at all. No, I want no. that to be known. I want that yep. to be known between you and the staff and everything. I'm just, I'm just wanting, I'm just questioning this and I want to, I, I'd like to see some of those numbers during that presentation. So, all right, perfect. Thank you. Sorry. Move on. Any mayor and council, I'm uh, going to present the airport budget first. Uh, I'm going to excuse our airport manager, Cameron Atkins, is on a military leave. He is on. I believe he can hear what's going on. I think he can actually comment if if you have specific questions for him after we get through this. So um, our airport budget is currently shows that it's dropped just a little bit. Um, like like Rob said, that's going to fluctuate with our fleet costs when they get associated with it. But we do have a minor reduction in benefit costs due to a the elections that the uh, airport manager took this coming year. And we also have a reduction in our uh, professional services. Last year we had 20,000 built in there to get our minimum operating standards, rules and regs updated. All that stuff was built into our professional services. We've reduced that cost and we've upped our operating supplies a little bit. So that's kind of offset that professional services. That's due to, you know, we have a presence there now. We've got someone there daily. Uh, obviously it costs a little more to have somebody at the, at the terminal working 
um, every single day. So that being said, we do have one request for an additional or a Bobcat Toolcat out there, which is a multi-purpose machine, which would be part of our fleet. Um, motor pool expenses when we get to that point, that Bobcat Toolcat would have a, a mower deck, a flail deck, forks, buckets. We're still, we're still um, going for that. Herbicide. No, we're not going for a, sweet, a mower. We're going for a multi-purpose tool. Multi-purpose. Um, this would be an all-around tool. We could spray weeds out of it. We could have a bucket, um, forks, mower, and flail deck. And that's that would be... Uh, Built in our motor and, and what's your what what are you looking at spinning on one of those? That estimate on that was ninety five thousand with all the tools attached. And it has to be a bobcat. Um, we we priced it out just getting some preliminary costs. Um, bobcat is the most multi purpose function it's got. Um, some of the attachments we actually priced through a different vendor that weren't bobcat, and we've got some lower prices on those. Um, we got a quote, and this is a rough estimate. This ninety-five thousand with those with those attachments. Because I'm pretty sure it's going to be higher than that. I just bought one of those, so I skid steer, so yeah. I know how much that is, and that's a multi. Well, it's a little bit different vehicle. machine. It's I like got, how you call it a utility vehicle. Is it open a, cab or is it a, air conditioned? It's got a cab on it, and it's got a bed, like a little truck bed in the back. Um, but it's got the front attachments where you can put the the bucket on the front and okay. the forks on the. So it's not quite a bobcat. It's got a little utility bed, like a, almost like a, a gator type thing, but with the front um, attachment. You, you can use it to, you can be on the taxi, not necessarily on the taxiway, but you can run stuff back and forth, We can right? use it to mow around the lights, um, mow up and down adjacent to the runways and taxiways. We can use it to clean up garbage and dump in the dumpsters, and we don't have to run out there with a, a loader or backhoe every single time and need some help with something, so. This was the best all around purpose tool that we could find and it, and it kind of covers all the bases. Okay. Um, and Lance, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna, we don't, have, we don't have one that's sitting below Jensen Hill in that yard right there that we could use as a mower and not have to spend that attachment money. I'm just asking. Well, we, we take our mowers out there currently right now. We've got a brush hog and then the one off tractor that okay. they're basically on their last leg. And we take our, our little ones out there periodically. To, and it's just, it's hard on them. They're not meant for that kind of training. Okay. All right. Anybody have any questions on the airport for Lance? I'm sorry, Lance. I go got a summary of all the expenses in that operating budget. And that, there's been good things happening out yeah. there. Good, good and, things and are happening. It's, it's, it's getting cleaned up. I, you almost convinced me to get almost, that bobcat. Almost, almost there. No, Cameron's doing a great job. I, I'm getting home from military leave. Um, any questions on airport? I'll move on to sanitation. Sanitation budget. We've had a, a small decrease due to a couple of replacement vehicles that have fallen off our replacement costs. But as Rob mentioned, once we get our motor pool fees back in place, we're, we're looking at purchasing those three, three garbage trucks out of our uh, fleet fund and not financing them. So that those replacement costs would be hit in our motor pool phase of this budget. So that, that would definitely increase as we get the final budget numbers together. Um, the last word we got on those is we got, the first one should be hitting the, the shop as far as uh, Peterbilt delivering the, the chassis to our bodybuilder in May. So we got one coming in May, supposedly in, Ju in uh, July and August, and it takes estimated 90 days to get the body built and put on it. So our first truck should be here after the start of the fiscal year, just, just barely with the first one and then a month or two after for the next two. So you had three of them? Yes, we've got three. We, we, we had the one purchased and then we were going to finance the, the other two. Uh, and then when we got looking at our fleet plan, we're, we actually have the, the money in there to, to pay for those out of our fleet fund and then pay those replacement costs back out of sanitation to put that money back in the fund. Um, sanitation is it's, it's pretty similar to last year. The only thing I would I did want to mention that we uh, so on our capital outlay we had a downtown dumpster enclosures it shows a carryover twenty thousand to next year. We are starting on the one at Central and Maine, so I want to reduce that um, in our CIP before we bring that back for final adoption and reduce that to ten thousand. So we're going to spend ten thousand get the one done at Central and Maine and then hopefully get with the county and maybe do one at, at the probation 
um, parking lot on the other end of Maine for next year. That's what that other 10 would be for. We'll get the one done so they can see what it looks like and then hopefully move forward with that second one. So is the one down on Central and Maine, that one's getting started? Like, did they yeah, start they're actually, already? They're, they're actually uh, digging out asphalt and stuff today there. So it's it's in the process. We've got the block. The block finally showed up for that and the cemetery entrance. So we've got all the block. Those, those should all be moving forward here. Doing it in-house? Yes. It's all that's in-house. Um, with a with a few people I got left, I lost another one today <clears throat> to a to a motorcycle wreck. Oh no! Um, injury, injury though. Injury. He, he, he'll he'll be back in a few weeks. Okay. So, um, any questions on sanitation? Um, landfill budget. We do have a, a small decrease due to staff turnover. We had some attrition. Um, lost some. Some an employee that was a that retired, um, more experienced employee. So there's a minor reduction in salaries. Um, do you have in here seventy five thousand that we had in our budget last year uh, for our BLM environmental assessment? We've been working with BLM constantly on on getting this thing. It's a slow process with the BLM. Uh, we have got to the point where we are um, going to be reaching out. So they they were trying to get their uh, their uh, Nora approved through the through the feds in Washington D.C. They're still reviewing to get that out, but we did find out we don't have to wait for that Nora to be approved, so we can go out to these three pre-approved BLM consultants and get our environmental assessment um, study started. So we'll we'll submit RFQs to them. We are just we've hit all three of them up, and one other requirement we have with that is that they're going to make us provide a mineral potential report, and we didn't want to do two separate RFQs. We're hoping that at least a couple of these firms that are pre-approved can do the mineral potential report with the study. So we're going to um, reach out to them, wait till they get back to us and find out which one, if any of them can do both. And then we'll, we'll probably select them and not have to do two separate RFQs. Um, so we won't have to advertise that. We've already got the pre-approved consultants. We'll get that out. We'll start that environmental assessment process, and then it'll be back in BLM's hands to finalizing so that's seventy five thousand is to cover the cost of that environmental assessment study so Mr. lands i i need to <clears throat> i guess better understand um and maybe it was said to me and i just didn't hear it um you you wrote that there's a decrease due to staff turnover but i i show on here a total change to operation budget is ten thousand one hundred and five should that be a negative ten thousand one hundred and five uh, in parentheses mm -hmm. yeah that parentheses means it's negative so the so parentheses means it's negative. yeah any parentheses you see is a negative number unless it's a revenue yep unless it's what a revenue okay because I've so far I've seen these are all expenditures so any parens here is negative is negative so my other question to you Lance is um the purpose of having staff present is. We want to hear from you. Is this really, really what you want? Or is this just what, and John, I'm just going to say it. Don't make it. Or is this what John's ahead. come back to you and said, this is what I need you to be at? This yeah. this is what we need. John, city manager, asked us to request what we want. And That's what I do, thought he said. Yep. He we said. Always, always put everything in there. Sometimes we get shot down, but we haven't, haven't been shot down so far. So um, only on one thing. Okay. And but so like this I said, is what we need. I'm not. I'm not saying this for any disrespect. I just want nope. I want staff to know that, hey, now is your time to present your case. And, uh, you know, I mean, we can then tell John, find us a little bit more money to whatever. So I don't need more out. Uh, you know, my, my, my other question is, is in this budget, and this might be a question for John, I in this budget, is this a budget that's already going to reflect what you are wanting to do with the the increases in salaries no what it reflects is any changes that have occurred so for example the mid-year change we made with police will be reflected the four and a half percent in the insurance because it's required will be reflected but on april 3rd we'll be talking about all the compensation we'll be talking about the salary survey health insurance hsa so we'll bring all of those to you on the 3rd of april and then on the 10th we'll be seeking adoption of those various components so that as we move into May, 
then you'll be ready to go with the budget in May. So right now, any any kind of salary increases other than those that have already occurred are not in these numbers. So so these numbers are definitely in the rough form of numbers. If they are the, current. They're current. Yes. And they will so they have a possibility of increasing if this council chooses Correct. to go one point five million dollars of salary in. I'm going to throw that number out there because that's what keeps being popped up to my head. Well, and, and again, I think what we want to do is we have to, we want to have a more specific discussion on how that all okay. comes into play. Okay. But any kind of increase year over year as a result of council making any decision is not in here. Okay. All that's in here is any adjustments that were made over the course of this past budget cycle up to now, um, at least very recent which would include things like the police, the four and a half percent for insurance, because we have to pay for that, right? But anything that's a council decision where you have an option, HSA, health insurance, salaries, none of that's in here. Okay, and I, my apologies if this was discussed prior to no. this meeting of that, what I'm asking for. So my apologies if it was that I just didn't do my due diligence. To nope, and again, um, Rob actually presented it at the beginning of the presentation. That's the stuff you went over when you started. Right. But again, the whole point of these meetings is to ask those questions and get clarification. So Perfect. that's what we're here for. All right, thank you. One other point I wanted to make on landfill, Mayor, was uh, in the capital outlay, we had 175,000 in last year's budget. That was for 150,000 was for the transfer station, 25,000 was for drainage spillways. We, we decided we didn't need any spillways this year. So we pushed that out a couple of years. Um, our, our transfer station is going to go out and advertise for bids. It's the basically the concrete wall out there. Um, we'll have, hope to have that advertised in the next couple of weeks. We'll bring back a, hopefully a bid award to you, hopefully early May. By the time we get that project started, we're going to be pushing the end of the fiscal year. So I'm, I sent out an email just tonight to, to Rob and, and Matthew. I want to move that 150000 we had um, in this year's budget, just carry it over into next year's budget so we can finish paying for to get that done. So just a carry over item. Okay. Is there any, any other questions you have on landfill? Okay, thank you. Council, my apologies for taking up a lot of your guys' time. I'm sorry, I just got lost for question. Mayor and Council, good evening. Um, just wanted to put our utility support budget up there uh, in this massive text that we can all see from where we're sitting it just shows really the only impact to the budget and the change in the budget for the utility support group this year is uh, specifically in the utility costs for the MIOC itself fall within our budget and then the additional expense for our customer service uh, bill paying process those those fees have increased in both of those points with that, that's the, the, the bill pay, meaning our fees. And then the online bill pay process. We have so those all went up as well. Yeah. To, this, to the city, we see those internally. And so let's put those in there. And with that, just wanted to talk about a few of the things within the utility support. Uh, Mayor, as you talked about, kind of wanted to talk about what we've accomplished uh, within the utility support group. Uh, we put the conserve to preserve public outreach and uh, conservation program out into the public this last year and we were able to to get a grant to help support us along with what uh, was approved budget wise from the council and uh, with that we were able to meet with the school administrations for both elementary junior high and high school and with that uh, actually got to get into the classrooms and uh, begin that programming and that process and interaction with that with the school, um, we were able to, with those funds, uh, get some conservation messages up on our Valley Vision boards uh, across the city. And then, as you spoke earlier, I was able to talk on the radio show a little bit about that conservation program and what we're really trying to do is help educate the public and how they can help themselves in the future and keeping those costs down. Uh, we were able to weather some serious and never before seen spikes in both gas and electric natural gas and electric and uh, with our current stabilization fund 
and the support of the council, we were able to, to weather those with very limited impact to our to our customers. Um, as, as the mayor mentioned, there was some PPA adjustments just off of what that commodity price reflected in the market and how we need to be able to cover that. Uh, again, we were able to roll out uh, City Works. It's an automated work work order system kind of brings us from the 19th century into the 21st century where we're able to to track the work that's being done on a live basis um, management's able to see all the work that's going on uh, both physically uh, through pictures and then in the process so there's a continual understanding of what's going on on the ground and uh, that can be seen at all levels through management and then using that data and information to to forward our operation and really what 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 works great for us what we need to improve uh, whether there's any shortcomings in our equipment and our systems and our processes to allow us to that growth and development as we we move forward in the 2023-24 um, we're going to continue to expand our conservation outreach program um, hopefully this year we're, we're looking to expand that maybe into the high school world and uh, some possible field trips to some different locations. You saw some of the programming um, as Morgan brought that forward uh, last council meeting to see how that animation kind of brings it in and uh, allows the understanding of the system and just taking that to the public. Um, some of our other high priorities in our department is really comprehending what Fry Mesa could bring to our water system. Um, through a study that we're doing there, what, what that can do to improve our system long term, and then just continual work towards our master plan as far as what's our best basis and how we want to move forward, moving into the future as the city of Safford. And then just uh, really trying to maximize the, the money that's been provided for our education and training of our management team. So with that, I'll stand for questions um so you have uh i've noticed in in years i guess maybe i'm paying a little bit different attention but i don't know if i haven't looked back on the rest but i've noticed that we're we're creating a a specific travel specific for for finance so we took we took their travel off of this for the this year's budget down by 75 percent. so are we making a new line item for all of our uh, employees to go to training on a different line item for travel specific. Do you see that? It says uh, it's which, a 75. Which, uh, which budget are you looking at? Is utility support budget okay. and the internal services. Okay. On uh, this is that. It says 75% and then also 64, uh, minus 64% for training on 811. I guess that means we're going to take your blue stake person and move them somewhere else. And, um, so in other words, I'm I'm just seeing I'm seeing these these numbers, and I'm I'm wanting to ask if are we making a new line item where all of our travel is going somewhere? I think I think that you want to speak. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Um, when we were sending folks to training, uh, they were splitting up the two different the cost into two different areas. How much was training, and maybe their per diems, and then the travel of cost elsewhere. Normally your travel is just truly that business travel. We're, we're doing this because we're not training. Uh, all things associated with training wouldn't also include travel if you're sending them someplace else. So what we're trying to do this year is differentiate between training all in, whether that's on site or whether we're sending somebody away, what that cost is. And then travel would really be that business travel element. As an example, business travel, if uh, we had to send an officer to Pima County to testify. They're not training, they're merely, we're paying travel expenses for them to go do some business work on behalf of the city of Safford. So instead of trying to split between line items of, because it, when we're sending somebody to training, we're looking at the training cost, which is also inclusive how to get them there and how to keep them there to get their training. So we're looking at training as all, all one, not trying to differentiate between the two. So. Somewhere in this budget, I'm going to see $100,000 in training. Yes, all in for, yes, Mayor, member of the council. We'll total that up so you'll see all the training, and then we'll separate out the travel, which truly is going to be business travel. 
Uh, so if you're going to perhaps um, National Leagues of Cities if you're on behalf of, of the city, and that would be a travel expense, not necessarily training on behalf of the staff. Okay, so will we know line item what company or uh, sorry, what company within the company is doing the travel? Because this way here, I get a chance to see like I get to see them spending two or two hundred or excuse me two thousand dollars on uh, travel. Um, and so if we combined it all and we only throw a hundred thousand dollars towards it, and what if the uh, you know utility supports wants to end up using five thousand of it when realistically we only they only need to budget two thousand of it. So I'm saying, will we see those in line items as travel? I mean, or as expenditures for travel? Because I don't want to just see a budget number of giving you a hundred thousand dollars and you just combine it and say everybody go travel for a hundred thousand dollars. I want to see it broke down so I know which department's traveling, right? Yes, yes, Mayor, member of the council. It still would be by organization. So in this context okay. here, uh, utility support, uh, looking at what their needs were specifically to this organization. They needed less in travel. They also needed less in overall training. So you'll see both of those went down, but the vast majority is sitting in training because that's what they're doing. Uh, they will be training their staff uh, that's sitting with this organization. Their business travel element is a small component of their operations. So you're asking, so it went from 2020, 2022 to 2023, it was $2,000. And from 23 to 24, it's gone down to only $500, correct? It went, it went down to $500, yes, ma'am. So, so because they don't need to travel that much, I guess, right? If you look at, so you'll see the year-to-date expenditures. I see that. They haven't spent any of that training yet. Okay. So we've decided to lower that because they don't have training opportunities. And so, 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 Mr. Holcher, what you're telling me by us doing that is I feel like now, well, crap, since that, excuse me, dang, since I didn't use my $2,000 budget, you know, the city just took most of it away and said, okay, we're only going to give you 500 for travel, but what if something came up? So, you know, I don't know. I understand. I, I, maybe I'm saying. reaching too far. Maybe no, I understand. I'm reaching too much. Mayor Couch, if I may, the whole point of this process for the departments is to tell us what they need. Right. So if you come back and say, you know, I'm going to go to X, Y, and Z training, generally speaking, the requirement would be that the department would list and give you some estimate as to, for example, I do ACMA. So ACMA meets twice a year. Matthew goes as well. So we should be looking at ACMA twice a year, both the travel and training. So registration and travel. So we should have an idea of what we're spending on. If I look at council's budget, you know, you may be, you know, funding the Arizona League in cities and towns, we should be able to get that number. So if the training is reduced by $9,000, then that conversation should have been had during the budget process. And if there was a higher need, it should have been explained in documenting. I'm assuming that the reason it's been reduced is that the department who's asking for the money agrees with that reduction. Okay. Right? So that's the process. So, so on the, on the travel, the one, Mr. Holcho, that we're looking at, there's no year-to-date expenditures on that two thousand. Correct. So, meaning they didn't use any of it. Correct. Well, I'll take it away too then. And <laughs> and typically, when we looked at these, when we looked at these budgets, we met with all these departments, and when we met with them, we talked through, you know, what are the possible trainings and travel opportunities that you would have if the department had came to us and said, we, we don't see a need to use those funds, then we said, okay, well then let's consider lowering it. A lot of times uh, they lowered it because they didn't see a need to go, they didn't have travel and training opportunities to go to. Okay. It's, uh, it. We're not gonna put an absurd number in there, right? If okay. they're never gonna spend it in the year and she's gonna sit there. I appreciate the clarification. Makes sense to me. I just don't, you know, to me, sometimes you hear it Two different ways how you spill it right i mean because i agree with you if you're not going to use it i'm going to take it away from you but at the same time then some people will say well i'm going to use it i'll reiterate what's already been said all the department heads came to us we didn't we haven't lowered anything these were all what department heads brought to us okay. this is and this is their opportunity to tell you you know Absolutely. here's what that's i brought and I, that's what john wants that's what we want as well i'm sure john wants the same thing because the council asked for it right you asked for it and you got it, you got it. so you got it. so mayor I, I can speak to this obviously because there's there's three of us that fall within this utility support group so 
me being new to the position, there's a lot I need to learn that's here on the ground. And as far as networking and expanding my knowledge with other cities and the support as far as what we could do, being on some board for the state, those, those are all opportunities that could come in the future. But I felt like really right now I need to focus in on what the city of Safford is. And so I have a limited training outside of our, our city right now. I appreciate that, Jason. Thank you. That makes total sense. I still had a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I haven't seen anywhere in here anything that deals with our meters. You know, we used to have, we used to test our meters. Now they've gone electronic all out there. I don't know that we are receiving everything we want from, you know, uh, are they are they capturing the right amount of electricity we're selling, water we're putting out there? Are we getting any, you know, are they uh, calibrated correctly? So, uh, uh, is that, on, is that going to be on down further? It, to it, the it, actual it, water it, it's in the department specific, yeah. not at the, at the utility. Department, department specific? Uh, no, actually both in our electric water, just, just as you ran through those departments, each of those have their own testing requirements. This is just the utility support. Yep. It's the admin. Yep. Right, and yep. they'll be specific to each like water, electric. And, and we'll speak to those in a few minutes through all those groups. We're comfortable that we're sticking in an electronic meter, no longer has any mechanical things in it, and that it's accurate. Uh, we've been at it about eight years now, and nobody's ever brought back, how are we doing with them? Are the batteries holding up? Yeah, all kinds of stuff. So it's going to be a minutes. Okay. Well, Jason, before you leave, I, yes, I don't see a parenthesis in this. So this one here, you've gone up 20,000, right? I'm sorry, I'm a I'm I'm not colorblind, so I like seeing color. Uh, whoever designed this, next time I'd like to see a red number or whatever, and then yeah. black means you're. So my overall increase for the budget is twenty-seven twenty-four, okay. which again is in the utility costs and in the additional. And and I I, I hate this more than anything, but I'm still going to ask this you're question. Good. I hate the fact that some places charge you processing fees when you use your car. Yeah. We're not there yet. Down at Thatcher, if you use a card, you pay a processing fee. And City of Safford don't want to do that. So I believe that's what. You believe that's we, what we, we just don't want to do that yet. So so within that, we, we cover that. Right, we're covering it. And that's why I'm saying that shows an increase. And that's one of the reasons. And I remember hearing that number is pretty high monthly of what we pay a processing fee. And I mean, so you, so you, the, you have the possibilities of recapturing some of that by adding a processing fee. Um, I hate that. I hate it myself. But it's something if we we feel if we ever feel like we can bring that and and ask for that to be a to, if you want to use your card, you you have process. So I'm, I'm gonna open the door. Hopefully, then really part of the rate study, the overall rate study that we're going to suggest over that time, that, that you have these fees that fall within these different realms within the department and you have the ability to flex those as far as where you want to see those rises and falls. And it's really, but you have to look at it as the master plan across all okay. to see how those expenditures are required. The expenses have to be covered and so where do you want to cover them and how do you want to I, cover them? I totally get it. And Mayor Collins, I think you know, given our earlier discussions that we've had to raise some of the other fees, PPAs and stuff, this probably would not be the year, in my opinion, at least to raise. Oh, heavens no. I'm not, I don't want to do it anyway, but I'm just but saying. I'm that. just saying that, you know, it's something we could look at down the road, but I just didn't think this would be the so year. So you, you, you talk about increasing, uh, you know, doing processing fees and you bring my electric rates down 1.5%. I, I might be in favor of that. But anyway, thanks. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Man, it's ringing up here, guys. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. This is the Water Department budget, and uh, if you want to talk about increases, there's a, a big number down there without parentheses for you, Mr. Couts. 
but uh, I will touch on. You're going to start off with that big number first, right? Yeah, there's a. I will touch on the travel training as far as the uh, utility support. Jason did identify a conference that we're going to be going to in May, so you will see a little portion of money is coming out of travel training, out of the utility support, and then also the the water department. We have had a, a few members of the crew attend a water conference already this year, so you will see a, a little bit of expenditure out of there. However, uh, we can get into the budget, and what you'll see is there's going to be an increase due to the supplemental increase uh, for a rate study. Um, that amount will you'll see spread throughout all utilities. Uh, that total is in that center column there. The budget supplemental it is 15000 per utility. Uh, there's also operational increases due to fuel and supply increases, as well as adding ongoing expenses where the CIP was in previous years. So, um, meaning that the CIP project of the well exploration uh, that was always in CIP, well, now we're viewing that as an operational item to where that's going to be put in the operational budget. And if there is a well that we find that we want to explore um, in purchasing, and they would turn into a CIP item at that time. Turn it into a CIP item, do we have to wait a year or something in order to purchase it? Um, I would ask uh, Rob that question to. So if you find a well, do we have to wait? The way he has it now, yep. and then he identifies a well out there that we want to purchase, then it'll turn into a CIP item. Do we have to wait? Yeah, yeah, Mayor, members of the council, no, if, 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 as we found in, in working with uh, the water staff that this was really the exploration or determining whether this is something we needed. It was sitting in the CIP and not, not, not really doing anything from a capital perspective. So we said, let's just do those as operational items. If it does, we find, if we do find that there's a need to either purchase or create a capital project, one of two things can happen. One, we could plan for that and then do it in the next fiscal year. Or we can, if we need to act immediately, we can take what would be a budgeted from a contingency perspective to transact that in the then current year, which is precisely why you have contingency either looking for grant funds or where something may be presented to the council uh, that you may want to work on or, or, you know, or actually execute immediately. Those contingency funds would be available in that then year. Yes. Yes, Mayor and members of the council, either through capacity of CIP projects that may be delayed or use of contingency. Yes. Well, there is also an additional increase to personnel and increases due to benefit elections. Um, also within this budget that isn't necessarily included at this time would be a, an additional study for a 2020 vision. So we currently already have a 2020 vision study. It's essentially a master plan. The last it was done is in 2013. Uh, so what that master plan does is it, it looks at our historical data uh, for water resource, uh, projected consumptions, source requirements, water rights, uh, source development plan. It, always, it also looks at our storage capacity, uh, current storage requirements, future storage requirements, and, and fire flows. And then also, in addition, what we would want them to include in this study is our reclaimed system as we expand our ability to use the reclaimed water. We would like them to study that and develop a master plan for us so of what we need to be looking for in the future. Uh, also in the water department, what I would like to touch on are some notable operational items that we've achieved. One of them is the airport main extension. We expanded the the water line out there east on the east side of the airport to allow for additional hangars to be built. That was approximately 1,300 feet of eight inch water pipe. We also have the airport road crossing that we're gonna be installing a casing underneath airport road here in the next month or so. That's gonna be in preparation of the CIP project for the airport to improve that water infrastructure out there with the storage tank and uh, help with the the expansion of the airport. Um, we also have the cross well treatment. So that skid is still in process. We purchased that. We're about 30% uh, 
and it's expected to be delivered the mid-August of this year. We have the Lebanon main extension. That is a project that is brought to us by citizens out south of town. That is a council directive of 100% fully grant funded, which it will be. We have started through that process. We have come to a contractual agreement with a engineering firm. So we're in that design phase where we're gonna be starting that design and get going on that project. Also a PACE main renewal. So PACE Street out in Daly Estates, we had three significant main breaks within uh, two months of this failing old infrastructure. So we are replacing a section that's roughly 600 feet of pipe in the ground and we're doing all that in-house. Yeah. That's in the street. With that, I would uh, open or stand for any questions within the water department budget. About your water meters. So within this budget, uh, we have the, in regards to the water meters, we're about 10 years now. So water meters are expected to live 20 years for the first 10 years or 100% replaced. So if anything happens to them, whether that's a malfunction of the meter, uh, reverse reading, uh, the screen goes blank, the, the company would replace that at full cost, 100%. After the 10 year mark, we are gonna see a pro rate where next year we're gonna be expected to pay 33% of each meter. So you will see an increase in the budget to account for that increase, that pro rate increase. And then every year after that, that increase is larger. So we will be starting to budget for that as we get to the, the new life cycle of those meters. And there's 50,000 in there for 250 water meter replacements. Help you out on that? Oh, I'm talking about are we recouping all this kind of meter? 10 gallons goes through the meter, only registers five. You know, that gas, water, and electric. How are all our meters holding up? Are they recouping everything we're putting out? So have we so have, have we grabbed an, an, a model that's been used for five years and maybe do a quick little bypass and test that one to make sure that 10 gallons is going through it. 10 gallons is actually what the customer got billed for so that we recoup our investment in the water. Is yeah, so throughout, that so maybe that's, that's what um, throughout the years, we have customers that actually think that their meter is directly as my technicians, they will go out there and they will test. Um, they'll even fill up a, a five gallon bucket of water. It's easy for that. You open the spigot, uh, you read the meter, fill up a five gallon bucket of water, and you can determine if that meter is meter correctly. And I would say more often than not, that meter is correct. There are some times where the meter is incorrect, where it starts reading when it's not in use, and that's where we identify those. We replace that meter and swap it out. And we're we were being able to tell people that math was making when we first started. That was, we were capturing a lot more. People got mad at us. They thought we raised water in. We were recouping every drop. That's what I'm after for every new country. Much of it. There's some more. Members of the council, in another organization structured, our AMI group, uh, the technicians that actually do go out do the, the meter uh, diagnostics and testing, uh, we do pay for annual software for us to go out and do that diagnostics. Uh, perhaps this is something we could look to bring back as an operational item to talk about how we go about uh, reading, how we, how we deal with customer inquiries, and how we do our, our kind of standard testing uh, to, to ensure that our meters are operating correctly and that we're billing uh, appropriately. But the AMI group is the one that actually does the diagnostics. I can understand. We do be currently on testing our own meters periodically, whether a customer calls and, and complains or not. We are, we do with this, we say AMI? Yes, for the, yes, in our AMI group that, that does report to, to James Carvajal, uh, we have, um, uh, the three technicians that are there that they will go out you know I, I i don't want to speak to the specifics of do they go out you know once a quarter and and do a 10 percent test that's why i want to get more of that information to bring it back to you but we do have the diagnostics i know at least on a, a consumer uh, inquiry perspective 
uh, that where somebody believes that there might be something faulty or where we're looking at a read that doesn't make sense, right, from one, one month to the other. So we have also diagnostics in our billing system that let us know that, wait a minute, there's been a major drop or a major jump. Let's go out there and test that meter to make sure. So we're looking at it all, not only on a complaint based, but we're looking at our own data uh, to determine to go out and, and uh, do our own testing. You get you happy with that? Um, better. Better. <laughs> uh, Rob, before you leave, um, I'm sure that on this one here for the water, you got travel and it just says minus 75% travel expenses. I'm pretty confident that that's going to be moved over to your travel specific, correct? Correct. So within water services? Of, with yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to understand uh, because some of it says it, some of it doesn't. So this this uh, four thousand that once was, and now we're cutting them down to only I guess three thousand. So no, to one thousand. So that seventy five percent reduction is going, or that one thousand now is going to be moved over to travel expense specific. All travel is coming out of the budget and going into a travel specific budget. Correct. Is that what I'm asking? Is that so, what I'm saying? So no. Maybe Council, perhaps I, I misspoke. When working with each of the departments, we're asking them to tell me what is travel only, meaning you're not sending them to training. Uh, you're, you're traveling on some um, business purpose. If it's there, if somebody is traveling for training, all of those costs are in the training line item. So we've yeah. got moved into the training line item where that department had said, you know what, I need to move it from one line item to the other and or I need to increase it or decrease it based upon uh, what what they uh, what they're projecting out. They needed to train their staff, so if they knew they're going to have staff turnover, a particular department might have said, "I need some more training uh, to ensure my staff is going to be at the level." Uh, versus somebody that might have more tenured staff, uh, they may have said, "You know, I haven't even used 100% of my training over the last three years. Why don't we reduce it?" Uh, and then I could always come back if I need to increase it if I have some turnover. So this is through discussions, uh, as, as Matthew had indicated before, we're not sitting here putting brackets around a number saying it needs to go. Uh, we do our line item review and ask the questions like you haven't spent it in a couple of years. Is there something is some other purpose for that? Or should we find another way in which to leverage those dollars elsewhere in your budget? Thank you for the part. Thank you. So then you can see there's two thousand dollars that it went up in training. So travel went down, training right. went up. So let's say I went to the league to talk about a bill. That would be travel, not training. If I go to the league to do um things about open meetings law, well then I'd have a travel component and a training component. Right. So in this case in water on lot on page 86 at the top, training actually went up two thousand. Right. So it seems like it's, it, does it, is it to me, does it seem like it's more work this way or no? I think the idea was to differentiate. I think this was one of Rob's ideas was to let's different travel and training are two different things. Let's put the money where it goes so we know what's actually training and what's actually travel. And so this is uh, somebody from the outside coming in and saying, hey, I see a cleanup item that would be nice to clean up. Where right. I clean so you up. know, okay, this is training, literally being trained. I just need to get caught in with, I, I need to get in. I don't think I could ever get in Rob's head, but I'd like to. I get you don't want to go. No, too too busy? Yeah. Okay. Yes, Mayor, Council, training has travels been training. I feel that, that the amount there is appropriate for the amount of conferences that we go to and I want to keep it there where you know we can't send these guys to to network and learn about uh, other systems and other uh, materials coming out technologies uh, thank you I think you're on the wastewater next right then the wastewater budget we will see we do see a decrease um, that is going to be due to the um, well, the, tra the training and budget increase due to the joint travel cost into training budget. So that's what we just spoke about. And then the supplemental increase for a rate study is uh, what you'll also see in there in that center column. Like I said, it's going to be spread across all utilities, water, wastewater, gas, and electric. Um, however, we do see a decrease in the, uh, the employee expense, the personnel. So there's an overall decrease in that budget. Are there any questions about the wastewater? 
I would like to uh, also point out some operational, notable operational achievements that we've done this year. So within the wastewater uh, department, we've worked with, on the reclaimed storage pond. So city crews used heavy equipment, excavated the pond to grade, and also an additional help from the landfill. They are helping and assisting with transporting the clay from uh, the Mayoc area to the pond, and we'll be lining that with the the, the wastewater department has also completed the the section of line of the reclaimed line from the treatment plant to the golf course or the fairgrounds. So our section of line was from the highway 70 to essentially the, the canal, the Union Canal on 14th Avenue. We did complete that this year. So overall, the uh, water department, wastewater part department installed 3,800 feet of 12 inch pipe for that project. There's also a Smithwell, the Smithwell CIP project that we've been working on. So currently we have installed the uh, uh, 1,100 feet or 2,000 feet of HDPE pipe. And the next phase will be an additional 1,112 inch steel that hangs under the bridge. That are, that's our next phase that we're going to be working at or towards. And that's going to allow the Smithwell to be pumped into our reclaimed pond for supplemental volume to be able to uh, distribute the reclaimed water to other additional parks. Um, I will note that there were some cost savings on that project due to employee um, advice or input where Norman LaRue actually suggested that we use the existing HDPE that we had laying out in the yard. And that was a $30,000 cost savings from an employee who's making a suggestion. So I do want to point that out that we have employees out there that are definitely, uh, they look out for resources and, and try to be efficient with what we currently have. The water department. On to the wastewater treatment plant. So overall, you'll see a, a decrease. So the cost is pr primarily decreased due to the biosolids weight being adjusted to reflect the dry weight of material going to the landfill. So the biosolids is the, the sludge is what we call it that's produced out of the clarifiers. What they do is they, they take that through a belt press and squeeze all the moisture they can out of it. However, they only squeeze about 12% of moisture out of that material. So as we drive across the scale, it's about 80% of moisture. So what we wanted to do was capture an, an actual dry weight so we, we reduced that to about 75% dry weight material. And so that cost going across the scale is going to decrease. And that's what uh, essentially the decrease of this budget is. You will see a uh, increase to Jacobs contract services. This is based on the contract agreement, which limits them to a maximum of a 3% increase. So how we go about uh, justifying the increase is through the water and sewerage consumer price index and that price index was 4.3 percent this year however as i stated the agreement limits them to a maximum of three percent increase so that's what we're doing based on the, the agreement um, similar to the other departments i kind of wanted to talk about jacobs and, and how they've been operating our treatment plant so as far as operational items go and maintenance They've installed a rebuilt influent pump and have, they have a spare on site ready to go in case something happens with that. It's a, what we call a critical spare. Uh, they replaced the sodium hypochlorite tank. So we purchased the tank. Uh, one of the tanks there was degrading and it wasn't able to hold any type of liquid. So we needed to replace it. We purchased this tank ourselves and we also installed it ourselves with uh, the city of Safford help with Jacobs. They tied it all back in, so we did not have to go out to get a contractor and install that. So there's some cost savings there. The number one clarifier was rebuilt during this last year. We uh, Jacobs drained and inspected the line and water jetted drain lines for the sand filter, so they have a very competent crew out there where they're able to do a lot of the maintenance that the previous contractor, I believe, probably would have subbed that out to a different contractor. They also replaced the influence screen gearbox 
with a new one. Uh, that project, a lot of these projects, we, we kind of partner with them where we provide city labor assistance with them, also providing a lot of assistance. And so there's a lot of cost savings there when the city can get involved and help along with Jacobs and their expertise. So with, in regards to the process control, the differences between Infomark and Jacobs, one thing I can point out is how they have weekly process control meetings and they, they uh, do samples three times a week. So they review the, the results with a process expert within Jacobs once a week and they're always conducting tests. So that's them operating the plant and making adjustments. If you don't make those adjustments, the plant becomes upset, which then causes turbidity to increase. If the turbidity increases, we cannot discharge that to the golf course. That's why it's so important. That's how it impacts us. So if they don't operate, which uh, the previous contractor at times would just let it ride out. Um, and how we can tie that is in 2019, we have 65 million gallons of water going to the river that we weren't capturing. In 2022, Jacobs had 45 million gallons going to the river. So you can see that there's significant differences in 20, 20 million gallons that we can now capture into the pond. And even more so when the operation changes, uh, we'll, capture, we'll be able to capture a lot more than that. So that's one significant difference I can see with Jacobs. The, the other significant difference is the community involvement. So Jacobs has donated 20 Thanksgiving food boxes. They've also donated 82 gift toys for Christmas, uh, supplied manpower and material for the installation of a basketball hoop for the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, they're active in the Gila Valley disc golf community and they conduct several plant tours. So um, I just wanted to make note that they are doing a good job out there. Um, I definitely appreciate their expertise and also their community involvement. That was one thing that stood out to me is that they're willing to give back they're also looking at donating a couple trees to the city of Safford that we can plant some parks. On the wastewater treatment plant is down 24,000. Correct. And, and a lot of that's due to that dry weight, so that adjustment of the scale. And when I jumped back up to wastewater, that was down 36,692, correct? Correct. Questions? Mayor Council, Council. Uh, before I start, I wanted to speak to the AMI um, and the meter question you had. I work real closely with the uh, AMI and meters. Um, they do have an audit system currently that looks at what our usage is compared to last month to last year. And they audit based on that. If the reading comes out, let's say 120%, they'll actually check it. Uh, they'll physically check it, the readings compared to what they've been previously, and they'll compare it to what's there now. So they'll compare not only to last year, but they'll compare it to last month. And I get these uh, reports from them usually monthly, sometimes up to 30 that had a high usage or had a high uh, low usage and we'll actually send out people to inspect make sure the meter's okay make sure there's no leak stuff like that i mean i even got one today that oh well this read this reading is off it doesn't look right and you know meter stopped working so we'll switch it out so we get those reports pretty much weekly and uh sometimes monthly depending on what month it is and how much usage we have but those will come in and so we can actually have an audit system to check our meters to see and with us having a lot of older meters we get a lot more of those reports than many of the other com uh, utilities but uh back to our uh, budget uh the gas division has the following changes to our budget um we've added three hundred thousand dollars uh to our gas purchase for resale that's due to the high natural gas prices right now they're kind of they're pretty high up there. Um, we have also added a $30,000 for a possible rate study. This is going to be uh, 30000 for the gas and 30000 for electric and fifteen for the water and fifteen for the wastewater. Um, this will hopefully look at what our rates are compared to other places and what compared to what we have and what we need to purchase and things that are coming up. Um, speak on the gas department. Uh, 
we've done pretty good this uh, last couple of years. And this last year, we've actually had six individual audits with the Arizona Corporation Commission. Uh, these audits have been over our uh, system uh, compliance, our records, our distribution integrity management plan, uh, our substance abuse program, our Pipes Act compliance, our public awareness plans. Um, we've had a couple of construction inspections uh, and all of them have come back without any findings or any issues. So we've been doing pretty good when it comes to compliance. For the last couple of years, we've had no issues. Uh, that's something you kind of rarely see these days, uh, especially for a municipality. Uh, we've completed our town and country project. That's done and out of the way. Uh, we replaced approximately, uh, I think it was 4,300 feet of gas main there. Uh, our gas meter project has been kind of a slow going. We've had 162 meters changed out this year. Uh, and this is due to uh, uh, the Natural Gas Distribution Safety and Modernization Grant that we applied for. Uh, if we receive this grant, it'll actually pay for the current uh, 980 meters we have in stock, and it'll actually uh, purchase another 1,800 meters, and it'll actually pay for our employees and two uh, added employees to re replace all these meters, and it'll pay their salaries, their retirement, their benefits, everything 100%. It'll pay for all that and it'll pay for my employees wages that are working on that project and my wages when I'm working on that project. Uh, this is this is a 100% funded grant with no match. We are hoping to get that and we should know within the next couple of weeks if we receive that grant or not. Uh, if we do not, we actually have uh, four more opportunities that are coming up uh, over the next couple of years and we're going to look at other projects that we can fund through that. Uh, one of them are possible uh, Tortilla Flats area replacement and isolated steer, uh, steel areas. And that, that's about all I have. Are there any questions or comments? <clears throat> How many, uh, the way I counted correctly, you have six employees? Counting yes, sir. Yourself? Uh, yes, sir. And I'm pretty confident that the reason why you need seven cell phones is one is for? On call. On call. Yes, sir. So even though they get a cell phone, you want them to have an on-call cell phone? Yes, we have the on-call cell phone. We found some issues when uh, it came to setting it up uh, automatically to switch over to a different phone. Uh, people wouldn't switch it over and it'd go to somebody else and leave their phone at home, their work phone. So we found it, it was, uh, with the gas safety, we found it was more uh, safer for us and easier for us just to pass around that phone between whoever goes on call. I mean, it's deep out on my budget, but I'm just, you know, interested in why we have six employees and seven cell phones, and then you explain it yourself. Yes, sir. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? Yes, sir. Um, would, if some of the other uh, entities don't don't have a meter on their incoming, but can you tell us what percent of the gas you buy you also sell? Or, uh, that would kind of tell us how much we're losing. Yes, uh, we do have, uh, currently uh, we do have meters at the Kinder Morgan uh, city gates. We have meters at our rec stations and then we have all of our meters that we sell gas to. Currently our actual percentage is uh, 0.45% above. So we sell 0.45% above what we actually purchase. And the reason that we have that is that most of our meters are um, temperature compensated. So the colder gas is, the, there's more gas in it. Uh, the hotter it is, the more it expands. So the meter will read the same when it's not temperature compensated. So in the colder weather, they'll actually get more gas for their money, but in the hotter temperatures, which we normally are, they'll get less gas for the money. So that's one of our reasons for trying to replace all these meters. Currently, we're actually selling gas that we're pulling out of the air. Uh, but uh, we don't have a gas loss. We actually have a gas gain currently. And that's due to these meters. And that's one of the biggest reasons we want to switch out these meters. Thank you. Council members, um, our increases are due to uh, the utility material and fuel market cost increases. And well, as you know, everything is going up. If you look around at the, the gas stations, it's going like crazy. Material, outrageous right now. And we have a large increase due to our increase in the power, power purchasing. 
and that's due to the volatility in the gas market. There was some supply line issues and some extreme temperatures that created that increase. Those are basically the increases that we have. If you have any questions on that, I could move on to our accomplishments for the year. Dan, are you uh, full staff? We are. Yeah. Now, for our metering issues too, it's very similar. Um, AMI will get a flag on any one of our meters and it'll send out a report. And we also do an annual meter audit with all of our CT rated applications. And we do a, an inspection after every new install, after one billing cycle to make sure everything is working properly. But we do also get the alarms from AMI and we communicate with those on a regular basis too. And we also have a, an ongoing uh, copper replacement project. This is a huge project. This was a $3 million project. It's to replace all of the <laughs> number six and number four solid copper system wide. It's about 16 miles of line. And that should be completed uh, in this fiscal. And then we also have our in-house uh, pole replacement project that we try to do every year. And so far this year, we've done 35 poles in-house. And for future, we have our Hollywood Road uh, relocation project and the substation upgrade. And we also have a tree replacement or a removal program. It's a pilot program that we started where we can um, remove a problematic tree, a nuisance tree that belongs to a customer. And we'll either give them a hundred dollars off of their utility bill or a tree voucher to go buy a new tree to have it replaced. And I think we've done about three or four of them so far this fiscal. It's kind of tough. People are attached to their trees. They, you know, we're knocking on doors, you know, asking, you know, hey, we'll give you this, we'll do this for you. Well, you know, uh, my grandfather planted that tree a long time ago. I'd rather just have you trim it up. But so that's kind of the, the battle we're facing on that. And we are trying to advertise that the best we can. You've, you've done, you guys have done a lot of tree, re, tree removals. They're not necessarily removals, but taken down out of the power lines along the highway. And so I, I think that's being taken care of. Never ending, sir. Yeah, yeah. no, we'll be on that for And again, we'd rather get some of the, rid of some of these trees, but again, it's just kind of like pulling teeth to, to get people to commit. Dan, I'd like to kind of ask you the same question I asked Raymond. And it, um, I'm sure you're not harnessing lightning, but uh, <laughs> what what percent are, of our electricity are we selling compared to what we're buying? Hundred percent. I mean, we have we have meters that are substation, and we have the AMI system also. Little bit of loss through attenuation from the transmission lines. Once it hits our substation and goes out, we're pretty much capturing everything. Good, thank you. Thank you. I remember, Council, you don't have to wait for me if you can if you want the session, you're directing straight on. So, members of the council, we are going through now uh, some of the internal services uh, departments. Uh, these internal services support other organizations within the city. Uh, we do that in order to collect the costs that make sense. If they're all uh, similar type of, uh, of services, then they get allocated out uh, to the appropriate users. Uh, for AMI, the, the major adjustments there, uh, as you can see, due to timing of, of hiring, who happened to be sitting in those positions last year when the budget was set, versus now who's sitting there. Uh, there are some slight adjustments on, on, on the um, salary line items and the benefits package that have been taken. Uh, one of the areas that we're really trying to focus on when I, when I met with the staff uh, is to try to find out, is there any movement between line items where it makes sense? Uh, you know, it's no, no surprise that if some, sometimes somebody says, well, I have money in that line item, that's where I'll spend it. Well, just because you have money there, let's spend it to where it's supposed to be. Uh, so that's where you'll see some of the changes, specifically here, where they may have had uh, cost in an outside maintenance line item, but really it was their operating supplies where they needed uh, needed the, the the funding. So it was just a movement uh, between that uh, in that area. So again, three technicians uh, that are out in the field uh, doing the metering process, doing the testing, uh, and uh, supporting uh, all of the other utilities. Any other questions on AMI? Rob, I, I don't, but I do, and I'm, I know we've already gone on with them, but 
we we mentioned before, staff has mentioned before, they talked about the rate study and where it uh, applies in their budget. And I have not seen where it applies in their budget. I just got thrown a number that 15 comes out of here, 15 comes out of there, 30 comes out. Of, is there a line item on our budgets for the rate study? Yes, yeah, so Mayor, members of the council, as we bring back the entire budget back to you, you'll see our, our full listing of supplementals uh, that we're seeking to add uh, into the budget year over year. So we're splitting out the quote rate studies over the appropriate uh, oh, the funds that would actually be paying for those. Um, so we will bring you back the summary of here are the changes year over year uh, by line item type. So if you want to see rate studies all in across all enterprises is X. If we're looking at any salary adjustment, it's Y over all funds and then specifically by fund. Okay, so where it says budget comments, a lot of times they they're they're calling out the reason for the increase is because of yes. rate study. But yet I didn't see a line item for rate study. You go back there were several. There is it's yeah, a so, under capital. So Mary, if you if you see here on it within as I mentioned before, the supplemental column. Okay. Um, where there's that thirty thousand dollars, if you were to look at the detail of electric, you would see thirty thousand being added to professional services to actually do the rate study, and it would be called out for in that line item. It's called what? Professional service. Professional services. So we have to read your mind. Well, it's it, if we put every single item, it would be gigantic. So you kind of go. Okay, oh, it's called rate study. It's called what? It's what it is. I mean, it's professional services, yes, but it's a rate study. Right. So if you look in the comments on the right side, you'll see utility rate study thirty thousand. I guess I'm just. So you there, see, can you show page one hundred one forty two of the packet. Uh, you will see the line item uh, called professional services right under personnel total. Uh, there is a. Budget request for 134,000, of which 30,000 is in that column called supplemental. And then we've defined all expenses equating up to 134,000 in the far right column, which the very last entry says rate study $30,000. Okay. Um, and so, I know that there was an agreement between the water department and um, the town of Thatcher that the rate study had to be agreed upon by Thatcher. The vendor. The yeah. vendor, yeah. exactly, who we choose. Yeah. And so, I mean, I'm sure it's K.R. Sling. So it seems like we all we use have K.R. Several Sling. Options. Uh -huh. Several options. We will have several options. But once again, you can't, it's best to combine them to do the research for us instead of just um, saying, okay, K.R. Sling is cheaper on the water or Thatcher is not going to approve, you know, whatever vendor we choose to do the water study. So then we would have to change that, correct? Or am I totally speaking out of context? Generally speaking, now I've not done a rate study here yet, but um, we seek the approval of Thatcher for water because it's required. We could approach these like we did uh, design, right? We would do an RFQ and we would do when originally a request for quotes to see if people are qualified and then compare those qualifications. And then in the case of water, we would go to Thatcher and say, this is the process we're going through. In fact, we might even invite them to the process if we need to, so they can go through and assess with us in the case of water. Perfect. Thank you. That's it. Just wanted to hear that. Thank you. Any other questions, Amy? Let's move on to business services. This is uh, basically our front counter operations. Uh, the face of, uh, of the public that comes into City Hall to make their payments. Uh, again, there's some shifting on the personnel line item, mainly, be, mainly due to staff turnover. And when we say staff turnover, again, at the point in time we set the budget, we look at who's sitting in those positions, or if it's vacant, we, we have a, a program on where to budget for that position. Uh, so as, as there's turnover from year to year, if there's, let's say, a long tenured employee leaves, or if there was somebody that was being paid more uh, leaves, then that next year it may come down uh, because of who you're now filling that role with, uh, that somebody might be more junior and not paid that much. That is the major, that's the, the largest component uh, of the changes uh, for business services. Again, meeting with the staff and going through the line items and looking each one uh, specifically on where do we need to spend the dollars. Again, I, I don't go into these uh, conversations looking to say I need to squeeze X dollars out of you. 
my question is, what do you need? And if we need to find a way to get it into the budget, we will do that. So working with James, there were just some, some minor uh, changes, really in operating supplies, uh, cost of paper and us billing, uh, our billing process uh, going up, as well as the cost of, uh, of uh, postage is also going up uh, year over year. You will see throughout the organization, our utilities expenses are going up. Uh, they're going up because our charges to our customers are going up, of which we are a customer of ourselves. So where those organizational units, as you heard from uh, Jason earlier, uh, they pay all the utilities out of his budget for the MIOC. Pretty much there's pretty much everything happening at City Hall is coming out of uh, this budget. So there's increases uh, for the utility expense in business services. And overall, the budget change year over year is going down just about 14 grand. Vast majority of that is due to personnel timing. Okay. And Rob, I, I noticed uh, in in our budget comments, uh, or not necessarily that, but in, in our um, positions and stuff, we see a lot of retirement subsidies. So I, I remember quite a few years ago that people retired and then for some reason we kept them either, I think it's on insurance or we subsidized for their insurance, correct? Is that is that what that is? And, and if that's correct, can we offer them a buyout? Yes, Mayor, members of the council, that's correct. This is the last remnants of a of a existing policy that that ha was here within the city of Safford that was sunset, and we're looking to ride those uh, users out of that program. So, in order for these uh, former employees to get their subsidy, uh, they need to demonstrate that they had a uh, a medical coverage or healthcare coverage plan expense. Then they get their subsidy payment. I, I don't know if it's semi-annually or quarterly, but that's how it's been done. I don't know if the analysis has been done on a buyout to say we're done or if there was some contractual requirement as to why we needed to write it out uh, based on any any statute uh, level. I don't know if the city manager or uh, HR director would have any more comment on that. Is there a way we could get what we are subsidizing right now? Like, do we, could you tell me it's only 15000 a year or is it 100000 a year? Is there any way to get that number to us? Yes, Mayor, member of the council, I'll certainly do that. It is in the hundreds of dollars per employee, not thousands or tens of thousands. And I mean, so, I mean, I, I'm just wondering, so, so would it be cheap to the city to offer a buyout or would it be best to just keep rolling with it? Because we know that everything always is increasing. So eventually sometime you might, might be better off to save money and do a buyout. But of course, I wouldn't buy out. I wouldn't sell out. So, some right. people might. Yes. And, and we are tracking that within the finance department as to when, uh, that that sunset, sunset date quality. is for that particular individual. Yes. Oh, so and so they're slowly years. going down. We might lose one or two every other year, uh, and that number will not grow anymore. It will only decrease. Yep. Yep. Bye. Thank you. Yep. So go on to other internal service funds, and then I'll be back up to finish out with debt. We'll turn it back over to our engineer. Thanks, Robin. So within our department, we have four staff right now, but obviously myself. We do have a computer-aided drafter and a contract specialist and an inspector that works within this department. Just a quick highlight on some of the stuff here. Um, going back over the last five years, we have kind of seen a, a snowball effect in some of our projects. We've, we've seen an increase in those over time, so resulting in a little bit of compression or, or I guess, backlog. It's probably better verbiage on that. Some of the highlights right now is we're, we're currently actively into 62 projects um, through some of the vetting processes or some of this completion. We've gotten 19 of them completed this year. We got 20 of them under construction. Currently, there's eight of them that'll be in, there's going to go into bid or contract forms. Um, we do have 15% or 15 of them in design phase and three of them kind of in an environmental audit or assessment. Some of the numbers looking at it right now, currently we're 60, we're about 60% design in-house is what we're winding up completing in here. And we're pretty close to that same number, about 65% of these being constructed in-house. Kind of a quick status is we're kind of sitting at about, at least now in the snapshot, about 25%, either no bids or rejected bids based on either price or, or no bids received at all. Kind of the status we're at. With regards to the budget, the one thing that we're asking for is a supplement of $3,000. Um, what this is, it's typical that our inspector um, oversees a lot of the construction projects and 
We haven't so much looked at this internally, so this is actually allowing our inspector to do more auditing of our internal projects. We've been working with the department heads so that we're holding ourselves accountable just as much as the contractors and, and the city. So this will allow them for external services to bring in Speedy to do some of the auditing and testing. So to ensure that we're doing the same as a, as a contractor. The only other thing I'll say on this budget is I've been kind of a big advocate for the um, grant writing position. I know that's kind of kind of bounced around in several different positions. I'm not sure exactly where it stands now. Right now, one of our bottlenecks is in that contract um, administration specialist. She's spending a lot of time right now in finances and contracts, so we can't really take on the grant writing process. Um, I think it'd be a great benefit to us. There's there's several projects that I think could be funded if we had the, the resource to help track some of that. So, okay, is this reflecting that or no? I, I'm not sure where it stands. I know we've had no, some conversations. No, no, because I, I personally think you should bring it to us because one grant would pay for that person's salary. Absolutely. And I you know have to I have to totally agree with that. So, um, so, so I think, I'm, and I guess, John, I'm, I, maybe I shouldn't have brought it up, but I know it's bounced around in several different departments. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think that, it'd be great. No, it, it's something that, you know, we discussed and it's something I'm looking at in, in new recent developments in the way we're uh, processing the CIP projects. I've got a couple ideas on that, which may be adding a position and splitting duty. So we're going to maybe try to add more work on the CIP projects and do grant writing with two positions. So we may have two positions that mirror each other, spread out the CIP, the RFQs, RPs, and add granting to both positions. So that's another potential option in doing that because we've got two needs right now, as you know, CIP projects have been a challenge. Getting them off the table has been a challenge. So if we were to duplicate the existing position, and that way you would have more capacity to do more of the work on the capital, but then by spreading it out, you would have some space within those positions to also do grant writing and grant administration and coordination. I, I would like to see it put on here. It will be. And again, those types of things, that, that's a new idea that's come as the budget has evolved. And so as we get into the third and we begin to talk about HSA insurances and the rate, the salary survey, what I want to do is also provide a list of all new positions, all positions that have been pre-classed and any new positions that we're adding to the existing list. So you'll see a complete list of all. Okay. And I know that we promised you guys a CIP update. So once we get through all the budgetary stuff, we'll give you more. Okay. Um, before we move on to fleet, I think we need a five minute break. Do we? Or do we want to keep going, Council? We're almost there. We are? Yeah. Keep going. It didn't look like it's almost there, but okay. <laughs> no. yeah. um, yeah, Mayor and Council, I'm um, going to present fleet real quick here. One thing I did want to point out that Clark uh, Bingham is Six months into being our new supervisor, he's doing a great job. I did give him a break tonight, told him next year this is his to, to present. So um, next year he'll be taking over presenting the fleet budget. But happy to announce that we're fully staffed for the first time in fleet department for a long time. It's taken a long time to get a couple of mechanics on board. Um, we did have a retiree and, and Clark was promoted to supervisor. Um, with that being said, I, I am requesting that we do a reclass of one of our mechanics so we have a lead under our supervisor as well. So we would have a supervisor, a lead, and then two mechanics. Um, so that increase, that slight increase you see um, in the operating budget is mostly due to um, a reclassification. Um, we have added a little bit of money to our professional uh, testing and certification because if, if you look on the line item stuff, we had $1,000 in there for CDLs. Um, we can't even get one person a CDL for $1,000 anymore. So, Right now, I think the college is around $1,300 to run somebody through that CDL program. <clears throat> that's, that's, we've been told that's probably going to go up as well, but I've got 3,000 in there. We've got one that I believe he just got a CDL and then our new hire would probably get his in the, in the fall by the time he gets in the classes or, or even next spring. So, yes, sir. Did you require them to stay with us if we have the CDL? Yes, yeah, so it's required of the position. Um, so our, our supervisor and our and our lead position would be required to have a class A CDL. 
Uh, the other two mechanics would be required to have a class B, and we have extended that out to 12 months because of the CDL program has taken, uh, it's got a backlog, and we're having a hard, you know, we're filling them up with a lot of city employees, but they also have other other people getting CDL. So we've extended that out to 12 months. Uh, we're getting them in that program and getting them through it. And then they're required to stay with the city for a certain amount of time or they prorate that back. I think it's a year after they get their CDL. If they if they leave within that year, it's prorated. They have to pay it back. Okay. I wanted to point out that um, this was our first year getting into the enterprise Fleet lease program. We had 20 vehicles on the list, and it, with everything going down, vehicle supply list, it was hard to get some vehicles. We're finally getting that happening. We've got eight vehicles now in our in our fleet from Enterprise. I think there's four or five more that are ready to come, so we're we're starting to make a, a dent in that first 20. We're proposing in next year's budget to put another 19 or 20 on there, and and get those switched out for the coming next year. Um, as Rob mentioned, and, and I mentioned before too, our, our motor pool fees haven't all been shown reflecting all those costs yet. We're, we've sent the list off to Enterprise so we can get an updated list of what those annual costs will be. Those will be put into each department based on which vehicles are being replaced out of which, which department. Um, any questions on any of that? Perfect. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, members of the council. Um, the IT and GIS department is fully staffed as of right now. And so we have a great group of guys working for me and very pleased with their performance. Um, our budget increases this year are main or some of them are due to software and licensing increases. Um, that's just because of inflationary costs. So that's part of that. Um, we are, we did increase our PC, um, our PCs that we're replacing for next, this coming year, we increased it by 10 more PCs, which gives us 20 PCs to replace. And then we increased our, um, laptops that we're replacing from five to 10. So this will give us more of a five-year replacement program for our, our throughout the city. And so that'll help with keeping up with uh, having our employees have, you know, new technology. Um, we did increase the radio um, budget by about $20,000. This is due to, we need to replace three radios in the fire trucks. And so we're doing this to get ready for the new upgrades that the county is gonna be doing. They're gonna be moving to digital radios. So this will get them all up to speed and, and ready to go. Uh, no, this is just in our budget. And then also we added $1,400 for our training. Uh, we found some self-paced training classes that we can take for our GIS guys. And this will uh, give us training for three people for the year. And other than that, that's about it. How about we add another 10,000 to that and get some microphones up here that work so Bill can hear us. Yeah, that is part of the CIP budget that and Mayor, that's my fault. I'm trying to evolve so we get the video. Write so, that down. Your first mistake. I'm, I, I, I'm here. I'm here. It has, to, it has here. to. There's a certain experimental piece that has to happen at some point. So, so we're getting there. <laughs> yes. And then we did implement uh, City Works, as Jason had alluded to. Uh, that program is is going very well so far. We've mainly focused on getting just. Um, water going right now so once we have water ironed out and everything then we're going to go on to gas and electric any other questions all right thank you very much thank you
So I'm trying to make it quick here, Mayor and members of the council. I'll, I'll wrap it up with two additional organization units and then just the closure of where we're at uh, from a budget perspective. Uh, materials management, uh, this is uh, basically to manage our warehouse where we're keeping inventory of items that are needed uh, by our utilities uh, and other departments, uh, kind of high turnover items as well as some specialty items that are necessary to have on hand uh, to fix, uh, fix issues that are in the field. Uh, there's just some slight changes right now. One is uh, in the motor pool cost and then in IT. Again, like I indicated earlier, those will be settled up once we determine those two budgets and then roll them back through uh, the organization. Uh, but there's not a lot of movement here. Uh, it's not like they're buying a lot of stuff for themselves. This gets bought into an inventory and then gets requisitioned out and hits the departments that actually acquired that item uh, from materials management. So what you're seeing here is, is roughly uh, personnel costs, uh, some utility expenses and uh, other equipment expenses uh, to run this operation. Finally, debt service uh, moving forward. Uh, main reason for the, for the budget difference is in our current year, at the time the budget was established last year, there was an expectation on what the value of the P P PPS, Public Safety Personnel Retirement System uh, debt payment would be. Uh, we budgeted at a higher level than was needed. Um, so we are actually brought that back down. And in some cases, some of our debt um, does go down a little bit over time as your interest payments uh, do start to subside. Uh, just a couple of numbers for you so you understand where we're sitting with our debt, really from a general fund perspective. Um, obviously, our, our pension liability debt is, is, is far away, uh, not something that's near term, uh, but with the nearest term item would be for the fire truck that we're leasing or, or had, had uh, financed, and that would go through fiscal 29 right now. So that would be the first thing from a general fund that would fall off. Uh, then uh, the police facility would be fiscal 34. In our HERF funding or streets funding, uh, there's two uh, debt items there. One is dealing with the bird no uh, property that was purchased about $80,000 a year, and that will go away fiscal 25. That'll be our last time with that, which then adds 25,000 back into uh, the HERF streets funds for other projects, other patching, other things that would be needed. And then the, uh, the main debt, the refunding of, of our uh, basically general obligation uh, to where the half cent is, is paying, that goes off in fiscal 29. So there are others that in some of our utilities, landfill, the compactor, fiscal 27, it goes away. Uh, some, one of our WIFA loans in water in 29, same thing in the wastewater in 29. So to give you a sense that in the near term, some of that stuff is starting to fall off to where perhaps our, our CIP, that's looking at some larger cost in the future, we then can have our um, non-consultant rate study uh, personnel uh, look at those future fiscal years and then start modeling what would be the required payment of those. So we now aren't showing that we're gonna have hundreds of, hundreds of thousands a year uh, in year, let's say 27, 28, 29, some of that stuff starts to fall off and then we can remodel if we were to go into debt on those items, how does that affect the rates for all of our utility customers? Any questions on debt? So Mayor, members of the council, next steps. So next week uh, we will be back uh, to talk about uh, all, all things compensation. We'll also to precede that with a revenue projection and fund balance um, a presentation as to where we're at uh, on all fund balances as well as what we're looking at from a general fund revenue perspective. Uh, compensation will follow on all of the items that you can see there. Our, our plan is to come back to you on April 10th uh, to adapt, adopt the five-year CIP uh, and then to adopt a compensation plan as uh, Mr. Casella had indicated. Uh, finally, on the 24th is where we pull it all together. On the April 24th, that is a comprehensive view of the proposed city manager's budget. Uh, so you'll see it in total. Uh, that's where you would see year over year if we did nothing different. And then what would all those supplementals be? Uh, we will seek to add also additional schedules uh, to meet the comments that we heard tonight, such as well, how much are we spending on rate studies? Where's all of our training? Uh, and any of those subcategories that we want to look across the organization and have one view of that. Uh, right now, we are scheduled on, at least tentatively, to adopt the tentative budget on May 8th. Again, this sets the legal maximum. Uh, you can move money around after you adopt that budget, but you can't go above that value uh, that would be adopted on that night. And we will include in that uh, legal adoption of that tentative budget 
a significant contingency to deal with grant opportunities that might be coming our way, uh, dealing with some unforeseen expenses like we saw this year on any of our purchase of power. Finally, you'll see May 22nd, that's rubber meets the road where we have the public hearing and we finally adopt that budget. Uh, we will do truth and taxation relative to property taxes. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more next week on what that property tax value is looking like uh, in regards to the property tax levy. It's going up slightly by keeping the rate the same. And then finally, in June is when the adoption of the property tax levy happens. All of this is in order to meet statutory requirements of, of the state. Uh, and the schedule in front of you here, uh, make sure we're done in well enough time uh, to, to meet those statutory deadlines. So, Mayor, members of the council, thank you for your, your conversations tonight, uh, questions, uh, and, and uh, giving us uh, kind of some insight as to what you would like to see as we bring the budget back to you, in what way, and how we can package that uh, to hopefully make sense to you and to the community. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. This is working for you. This is what you wanted. A bit more information takes a little longer, but. Good for me. I think it's good. I'll make the motion. Adjourn. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Aye.